deliver the welcome address yeah thank you sandil sir i am really very very excited for this day we have been waiting for this day to happen uh, my very special and a very hearty thanks to dr joseph davidwitz who was kind enough to accept our invitation at our first request and uh, dr ralph has played a major role in seeing that dr joseph is here with us today so it's very very great and a remarkable day i should say for us many of us who have read so many places so many times that the inventor of geopolymer concrete every paper every time we see we see dr joseph davidwitz name which is uh, his legacy is being carried forward by uh, uh, his younger son dr ralph so we are very great to have you both with us today thank you very much uh and uh, i am my personal thanks to dr martin sir who has readily agreed when we approached him uh, a most hearty welcome to dr martin for being here and spending your time uh, we have our indian expert in geopolymer anybody in india you ask geopolymer concrete there be no one who would say then mention the name of dr rajmani so thanks to dr rajmani sir for accepting our invitation and a very warm welcome uh my special thanks to the ici chennai center and indian concrete institute in total for being a co-host for this uh, event and uh, dr vinay gupta is there with us today who is the president of indian concrete institute so a very warm welcome to you sir my personal welcome i am really very very excited i should say i am eagerly waiting to listen to this uh, legendary speakers of the day today we have we have uh, total registrations of 4000 cross i am very glad to share this all with uh, yes, yeah it's with all of wow. you that we have more than 4000 registrations it is being streamed live on uh, youtube and uh, my personal thanks to our uh, dean who have been instrumental in seeing that all the activities what we do are happening in a right way and without the support from the college management and our uh, dean it, these things would not be possible so i he was supposed to he said he would be joining but uh, some issues in the technical side i believe uh, so he's not able to join i hope he will at least join a little later uh, so uh, my hearty welcome to all the participants for the tremendous response we have received and your uh, very enthusiastic participation uh, i would not take much time Uh, with this, I would leave to my faculty to take it forward, and a very warm welcome to one and all present over here once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Vinay Gupta, sir, President ICI, to deliver a few words about Indian Concrete Institute. Please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Madhvi. Uh, good afternoon to some, and good morning to some, and I guess good evening to some. I'm not very certain. Is really. Uh, absolutely heartwarming to see um, as many people around in fact i was trying to see when dr madhvi said 4000 registrations and i was trying to see how many have entered the meeting and it so happened that uh, uh, the zoom platform when it shows the number of participants it does not have a limit beyond three digits so it only shows 999 or sometimes 1000 but perhaps there is close to 4000 people and or when to see that it's my pleasure in fact and my special thanks to uh, srm uh, ramapuram and the heavy energy that we have from all the people including dr madhvi and of course <clears throat> many of you i may not even know personally and of course ici chennai center who are also the co host and dr radhakrishnan pillai i hope must be there somewhere which i don't see everybody on the screen now uh thank you so much and i am glad that you organized this uh, event and as we say innovation it's a, this is really the innovation we do innovation in many fields like we do in construction technology and precasting technology and all that but this is truly an innovation on the materials i uh well just to tell you a little bit about ici uh indian concrete institute uh is the largest professional body dealing with only civil engineers in the country with a member base of nearly 13000 people or i would say 13000 self propelled professionals and of course mostly civil engineers ici started in 1982 with the strength of about 500 people over five centers 
Chennai being the head office, uh, you all are organizing it from. And uh, now today, after about 38, 39 years, we have 13,000 people, over 44 local centers all over the country. Mind you, the number of states are about 30 or 32 something, whereas the centers are 44, much more than the number of states. So that's where we are. And I must say that we are all in some manner or the other taking advantage of this COVID, the pandemic, the lockdowns, through webinars. And it's only through such webinar that we are able to gather so much in numbers. We are able to interconnect with people from abroad, from all over the country in India, all over the, across the globe. Even people like the, I think, pioneers of this technology, that is Professor Joseph David Ovid, uh, is there and of course among them the other people are also there so i don't understand very much really speaking today but what i know that uh, geopolymer concrete is highly durable is highly impermeable and that is what we need for sustainability so it makes you sustain con sustainable concrete that's what we are looking for today and i believe it is uh, a combination of uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and uh, sodium silicate or potassium silicate along with some alkali like fly ash and all that. So, of course, I am also very keen and eager to hear all this, but my good wishes to all of you. And I hope we take, uh, well, I'm hearing from Ralph Davidovitz some no, no, no. So, please explain during your lecture. Yes. I mean, I'm ignorant on this uh, part of the field, uh, the civil engineering. And as I said, we are all uh, very eager, keen to hear and surreal, uh, to my feeling, a real uh, innovation that has taken place in 1978, if I'm not wrong. So over to you all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Radha Krishna Pillai, sir, Professor IIT Madras, to deliver his views about the event. Right. Yeah. Dr. Pillai uh, is unable to join because of uh, this heavy traffic it has uh, crossed and he's there in the YouTube. But anyway, uh, he has conveyed his best wishes and regards and he may join very soon. We'll make some arrangement to see that he is going to join. We have crossed the thousand number and so he's not able to log in into this session. He is into the YouTube session. So, but then uh, anyway, he has just now conveyed his wishes and uh, we'll try to see that he is logging in sometime a little later. Uh, so, uh, Sindhil sir, please proceed with the next. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Mrs. Anuradha, ma'am, to introduce our speaker, Dr. Joseph uh, Davidovich, sir. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Anuradha, just try to unmute yourself. You are not audible. You just have to unmute. Anuradha, please unmute yourself. Just raise your hand once. <laughs> Yes, Anwar, please. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. Good afternoon, one and all. I take this opportunity to welcome everyone for today's webinar on geopolymer concrete. It gives me an immense pleasure and honor to introduce our speaker, Dr. Joseph Davidovitz. Dr. Joseph Davidovitz is a French material scientist known for the invention of geopolymer chemistry. He is considered as the father of geopolymer concrete. He posted that the blocks of the Great Pyramid are not carved stone, but mostly a form of limestone concrete or man-made stone. He holds the National Order of Merit awarded by the President of French Republic, Charles D. Gaulle. Dr. Joseph Tevdevitz is known by
by the scientific community for being the inventor of geopolymer science. The general public recognizes his works on archaeological science and his discoveries regarding building with artificial geopolymer stones. He currently works at Geopolymer Institute at France. He does research in geochemistry. His current projects are our new projects for 2019 and beyond, geopolymer science applied to archaeology, geopolymer cement and concrete, geopolymer for toxic waste management, and updating the standard book, geopolymer chemistry and applications. We are being privileged to have you with us, sir. Thank you, Anuraga. Uh, before uh, going ahead with the presentation, I am uh, glad that our dean has joined. Sir, dean, sir, can you just uh, raise your hand so that we can make you the co-host? Uh, dean, dean, sir, can you just raise your hand? We can identify you and uh, make you the co-host. Yes. Uh, yes, madam. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for joining. I am glad to introduce our Dean, Engineering and Technology, Dr. Murali Krishna, who has been the backbone for us in organizing all the events. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. I would just request you to say a few words. Uh, uh, very good afternoon to everybody present here in this uh, today's online session. Um, uh, I felt very happy that uh, the Department of Civil Engineering is conducting the international webinar on uh, geopolymer polymer, uh, concrete. And in fact, uh, I'll appreciate the department uh, for taking the initiative steps uh, even uh, for the few, few days uh, to the faculty members and as well as the delegates and our beloved students. Um, however, I've been repeatedly telling that the technology is coming to the picture, not only in the IT sector, but also it is actually in the uh, infrastructure field also. Uh, we are happen to see actually how the infrastructure constantly growing with the technology. As a part of this uh, today's session on this uh, geopolymer concrete, the concept of uh, geopolymer concrete, you are all aware that the concrete is actually generally, we have seen the concrete means uh, RCC concrete, uh, etc. But this uh, geopolymer is uh, advanced technology where uh, we used to get a fly ash from the industries. That is actually, uh, if suppose if you are not utilized that one, it will be, I mean, uh, disposed as a waste. So the, the technology is coming to the picture. The major industries like a thermal power plants or any other plants, uh, the major outcome from that is actually the ash. So that industrial, uh, wastage fly ash so far actually can be used. An example, good example is actually Delhi Metro. So Delhi Metro, what actually they did, they used this fly ash in their concrete. They have, I mean, practically it has been proven. So if you compare with the strength wise, it is um, it is almost all compared with this RCC structure also. So my sincere request to the all the delegates here. And I am happy to see, very happy that uh, the today participants has crossed 1,000. So a lot of appreciation will go to the Department of Civil Engineering headed by the uh, HOD, uh, Dr. Madhavi Madam. I am very, very happy to that. Uh, and uh, regarding this uh, today's uh, the, I mean, concept is one aspect. And the participants nowadays, we are finding very hard to, I mean, uh, participates in this online sessions and the topic is very good my sincere request to the delegates and the participants please focus it on this because of we must very thankful to the uh, corona and covid 19 because of this we are able to interact the eminent personalities in this online not only in this state or nation worldwide we are able to get the expertise so this is an opportunity to utilize the the resource persons for this today's session. I am very much thankful to this resource person, eminent personalities for this today's webinar. Uh, in spite of their busy schedule, they are here to address you. Thank you very much, sir, for the, providing this uh, opportunity. 
I am sure that uh, this uh, the outcome from this uh, today's concept uh, geopolymer concrete will be enormous. Thank you, Vananda, for giving this opportunity, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Very nice of you for uh, taking your time off this uh, with the busy schedule. Thanks a lot. Over to Sandil Velan. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now I would request Dr. Joseph Devrivit, sir, to enlighten us with this valuable speech. Please, sir. Okay. Okay, let's start. Yes, do you see everything? Yes, yes, yes. yes. it's all through. Right. Okay. So thank you for uh, your kind introduction uh, to make this presentation. It's a great honor. I'm very surprised that we have reached 1,000 participants. It's a world record for a geopolymer uh, conference and presentation. It never happens uh, before, as far as I know. And uh, so you know my name, Ralph Davidovitz. Joseph Davidovitz is here. Uh, wow. And uh, you know that he discovered and invented the geopolymer chemistry 40 years ago. So I was born in it and I have 25 years of practice in the lab and working for industry to develop products. So I, I have a very pragmatic empirical approach like a laboratory technician. There will be no theory with me, but information focused on industrial and practical applications. The purpose of my talk is not to introduce geopolymers. You can find enough videos on YouTube and our Geopolymer Institute website. Today, my main topic is to clarify some preconceived ideas that many civil engineers may have about geopolymers yes. still Dr. in a very Rath, pragmatic Dr. way. Rath, yes. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, we just give a formal introduction to your to your uh, profile. Just a second, few couple of uh, uh, minutes. Uh, we just give a introduction to okay. your good profile. Okay. Dr. Lakshmi, okay. would you like to make the presentation on uh, Dr. Ralph? It is my great pleasure and privilege to introduce our speaker, Dr. Ralph Devdovitz. Dr. Ralph Jevdovitz is the associate member of the official university laboratory, LTI, under the MIM projects at the University of Picardy, France from 2017 to present. Dr. Ralph is also the general manager at Geopolymer Institute, a non-profit organization for the promotion of this chemistry from 2013 to present. He takes part in research and development on behalf of the institute laboratory work in joint ventures, external laboratory scientists attached to the University of Picardy, France. He manages the book publishing activity for the Institute and organizing every year the geopolymer camp. He was appointed as the director of special projects from August 2008 to October 2012 and also quality manager at Pyromineral Systems manufacturer of high temperature composite parts for motorsport, military and aviation. He has also played the role of manager of Cordae Geopolymer, a French research and development company developing high performance ceramics, concrete and composite materials from May 1998 to July 2008. From June 1997 to March 1998, he was employed as the parliamentary assistant to the French National Assembly for the Saint Quentin Parliamentary Representative. Welcoming, sir. Thank you, Stella. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so Dr. Ralph, you may kindly proceed. So the topics uh, we will develop are the following. Number one, uh, CO2 emission and fly ash. It's a message from Professor Joseph Davidovitz that he recorded last July about the misunderstanding of today's situation about fly ash and CO2. And the second topic is geopolymer cement, why it took 30 years to succeed, because I believe it is the main interest here. So now I leave my father. 
Je clique. Oui, c'est bon. Continue. Bonjour. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, talking to this very large audience. Our first topic is CO2 emission and fly ash, a big misconception. I understood lately that uh, there is a big ethical problem with fly ash. Each time someone is claiming that a fly ash geopolymer cement is decreasing the CO2 emission by 80%, it may be true at first, but in fact, it is wrong in the end. Here is a 10 minute excerpt of my keynote I recorded last year in 2020. You may have already watched it. The good news is that it uh, opens a brand new range of new cement and materials. So, after geopolymer technology, we have now geopolymer cement and concrete. I have been shocked by this news, what I saw on the screen of my TV at the end of last year, December 2019. A continent is on fire. Both Australia and California have never experienced such an inferno. More and more citizens blame the climate change, the CO2 emissions responsible for this. Because of extreme heat and dryness climate, there is no rain. CO2 is essentially coming from coal burning in electrical power plants. And the coal burning in electrical power plant is increasing. Before 2012, I thought that uh, the use of coal in electricity production would decrease. This has been the tendency at that time, but then I discovered that, in fact, since 2002, when we look at the world energy source, since 2002, the use of coal has been increasing and the trend is continuing. So I was wrong. We had more than 25% increase since uh, 2002 and The governments of Australia, US, Russia, Brazil, China, India, Poland, South Africa, Germany, where coal mining and coal electricity power plants are significant industry and with powerful lobbies are entrenched and want to stick to their coal policy and business. But Do you know that the manufacture of one metric ton of coal fly ash is generating 33 metric tons of CO2 emission? Which means that all taken for granted ideas and promotional slogans about low CO2 cements based on coal fly ash are totally wrong. We should stop promoting fly ash based cement. This has been overlooked by all experts, including United Nations environment experts and myself. The burning of 10 ton carbon, carbon has 12 gram per mole, produces 36.66 ton of CO2. But the burning of coal also generates 10% by weight of fly ash. In other words, 10 ton of coal is producing 1 ton of fly ash and emits 33 tons of CO2. If we take a geopolymer cement or a Portland cement that is blended with a 50% fly ash, then we have to add 16.5 ton of CO2 emission to what has been calculated. 
These seem to be extravagant numbers. They are extravagant numbers compared with what we have been claiming so far, that is 0.2 tons CO2 for one ton of geopolymer cement, 16.5. Or for Portland cement, 0.9 ton of CO2 for one ton of ordinary Portland cement. <coughs> but Portland cement experts and Portland cement industry is, are not aware of these numbers and are asking for more and more fly ash. Why? Because uh, the United Nations Environment Program presented in 2017 in Paris a uh, result of their study on eco-efficient cements, potential economically viable solutions for a low CO2 cement-based materials industry. And this study has uh, been uh, under the directions of these authors, Carence L. Scrivener from Ecole Polytechnique Lausanne in Switzerland, Van der Lee M. John from Polytechnic School University of Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Elise M. Gardner, former scientific director Lafarge. Scrivener and Gardner have been both scientific advisor at Lafarge, Lafarge France being one of the biggest Portland cement company in the world. They have <coughs> a section dedicated to geopolymer cements and alkali activated materials. And uh, I read, these are excerpts. On the resource side, there are major limitations for geopolymer cements. These materials use the same substances, slag and fly ash, as those used to substitute clinker in OPC blends, whose limited availability was discussed in the previous section. So we know that uh, the Portland cement industry, in order to uh, decrease uh, the amount of uh, CO2 that it is emitting, has only one solution to blend it either with slag or fly ash. Without slag and fly ash, it is unable to cope with the requirement which uh, ask for lower CO2 emission. So this is what is written here. In the case of slag, almost all suitable quality slag is already used in conventional Portland-based cement or concrete. So there is no place, no quality slag available for geopolymer cement. If slag and fly ash are diverted from use in Portland cement-based blends to be used in geopolymer materials, it may be that the CO2 emission per ton of the alkali activated material will be lower, but the CO2 per ton of Portland-based materials will increase due to the lack of slag and fly ash for blending. Therefore, geopolymer cement can only contribute globally to the reduction of CO2 emissions in the sector if they primarily use many minerals or industrial byproducts not currently used as clinker substitute in blended cement. In other words, we prohibit the development of geopolymer cement based on fly ash and slag. The slag and fly ash must be only used by Portland. Final remarks. Geopolymer material produced with fly ash and blast furnace slag have low CO2 footprint, but their mitigation potential is dubious, that is, suspicious, unreliable, since they will mostly divert slag and fly ash from Portland cement. So, the strong lobby of Portland cement is working at the United Nations Environmental Program in order to stop the development of geopolymer cement. But they request more and more fly ash. 
The fact that the fly ash is used to make building materials is an excuse to increase coal production. Power plants are lobbying the cement and building industry with so-called low CO2 fly ash based cement. Any development and implementation of fly ash based cement is supporting the burning of coal in the production of electricity and increasing CO2 emission. Therefore, stop fly ash based geopolymer cement. Experts are stating that the CO2 does not count because it has already been spent in the production of electricity. But we understand that this production has no future because it is harmful to the global climate. Therefore, the production of fly ash based cement is not a long term solution. Fly ash based cement is supporting the burning of coal and increase global warming. Admittedly, the material is available and sometimes stored in large quantities, so it can be used. But I think it is not suitable for long-term mass production, only for local short-term markets or technical specialties. Therefore, we should stop promoting coal fly ash based geopolymer cement and I strongly recommend to replace fly ash with rock-based ferrocylate geopolymer cement technology. You may download uh, the technical paper number 27 at uh, the Geopolymer Institute Library if you want to know more. more it is titled Ferrocylate uh, Geopolymus. You may also uh, visit uh, ResearchGate. If you are familiar with ResearchGate, the social network for scientists, I am very active in this network. You will find the latest updates on our researchers, access to papers and more. Do not hesitate to visit and share this profile you do not need to be an active member to read and download our scientific papers. So now we continue with the presentation by Ralph. <clears throat> All right. Uh, geopolymer concrete, why did it take so long? Many of you know the geopolymer chemistry through the cement and concrete applications, and not through the ceramics, coatings, paints, composites applications. An interesting case study is to understand why it took so long to enter into the cement and concrete market. Geopolymer cement, why did it take 30 years from the invention in 1983 until the successful commercialization in Australia, where 100,000 tons of geopolymer concrete has been used for an airport in 2014. It started in the USA with a large cement company in the Western Hemisphere called Lone Star Industries. They invented the first geopolymer cement called Pyramid. In 1983, it was 11 years after the beginning of the research in 1972. And they filed the first patent in 1984 in the USA. So they invented the first early high strength cement, a very fast setting cement for road repair and airport taxi waste. Bear in mind that in 1984, even Portland cement did not provide that kind of performance. The pyramid was the first in the world to achieve this. It was a real innovation at that time. Since then, Portland cement industries developed similar solutions. So here is an example. In Los Angeles, a crew begins placing geopolymer concrete and in New York, a Boeing departs. After one hour, it is strong enough to walk on. After four hours, it is strong enough to drive on. And after six hours, it is ready for the weight of a commercial jet. 
So it started in March 1983. All rights have been sold to the company until 1997, where the company has been purchased by another one and they stopped. So it's only a marketing uh, reason for that. Why so long? I will develop the following topics. Every alkali activated waste equals geopolymer. The RELAM Committee on Alkali Activated Materials. Number three, for civil engineers, alkali equals danger. And I will finish number four with standards and regulation. Even if you are not a cement specialist, outside the business part, money, investment, markets, and so forth, some people are against the principle of a new cement. Some people try to denigrate and to minimize the impact of this new chemistry, and other people wanted to use the word geopolymer only for marketing purpose, with no connection to their technique. Why so long? Every alkali activated waste equals geopolymer. We had to fight against a group of scientists that wanted to hijack, to steal, to rob the geopolymer concept to promote instead a very bad, low-tech, but yet dangerous cement system, alkali-activated materials. For almost a decade, they have polluted people's mind with misleading and false information. What is a geopolymer? It is not an alkali-activated compound. It is not alkali-activated metacaoline, no alkali-activated fly ash, no alkali-activated slag, no alkali-activated whatever. It is the polymerization of silicates and aluminosilicates in alkaline or acidic medium. A geopolymer is a mineral chemical compound or mixture of compounds consisting of repeating units. For example, we have silico oxides giving polysiloxonate, silico aluminate giving polysilate, ferrosilico aluminate, polyferrosilate and aluminophosphate created through a process of geopolymerization. Since they are polymers, they have a polymeric terminology. We can distinguish between two synthesis groups in alkaline medium, sodium, potassium, lithium, calcium, cesium, and the like, and in acidic medium with phosphoric acid and humic acids. Geopolymerization is the process of combining many small molecules known as oligomers. An oligomer is the basic unit to make the network, the first small brick, into a covalently bonded network. So we are building a big wall with these small bricks. The geochemical synthesis are carried out through oligomers, these small bricks, dimer, trimer, tetramer, pentamer, which provide the actual unit structure of the three-dimensional macromolecular edifice. So we are creating a big molecule from small bricks. Some Portland cement scientists try to use their terminology to explain geopolymerization, which is totally wrong. I explain it to you. You have the molecule of CSH, you know it, with hydration and CSH in the end. CSH is a small molecule. It's an oligomer. It's a small brick. Here it is decalcium silicate. It is not a polymer. We have here the geopolymer. We have here the oligomer, potassium oligomer, sterlite siloxol, so the small brick that polycondenses into a three dimensional network. Here it's potassium polysilate siloxol. We call it silate polysilate siloxo. Silate, which is here, it's silicone and oxygen and aluminate. Aluminate is an aluminum salt with oxygen reacting with potassium or sodium. And siloxo here, which is here, it's silicone and oxygen. Silate and siloxo are always together oxygen here is binding them together. So this is the basic of the geopolymer polymer chemistry. 
Cement scientists continue to explain geopolymerization with their Portland cement terminology. And here is the chemistry of Portland cement, which is correct. We have the molecule of CL sage, calcium silicate hydrate. But for alkali activated material scientists, they want to substitute calcium with sodium or potassium. And for geopolymer, they claim that it is, a, it is not a calcium silicate hydrate, it's a sodium aluminosilicate hydrate, they call it NASH, or a potassium aluminosilicate hydrate, call it CASH. So they want to use the same logic to geopolymer, but which is wrong. Call it NASH CASH uh, is, is wrong. Why? Because we know that calcium you know calcium is not soluble in water but sodium and potassium are very soluble in water they are salt so a hydrate of sodium and potassium will yield to salt migration which is logical calcium doesn't migrate it is not soluble sodium and potassium are very soluble so you understand that this is a wrong terminology for uh, cement and this is NASH or CASH. This is sodium alumino aluminosilicate hydrate because sodium is so soluble in water, you have it's full of blooming and efflorescence of sodium salts. So this is logical. This is not geopolymer at all. According to alkali activated material specialists from the RELAM committee, geopolymer is a type of alkali alumina hydrate a precipitate, NASH, CASH, nothing else, which is wrong. They claim that a polymer is a kind of hydrate or a precipitate. If you have some very basic knowledge in chemistry, you start to understand that something is wrong. Alkali activated materials are not polymers, so they cannot be called geopolymers. These are two different systems. It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonyms. Alkali activation is a wrong terminology for geopolymers. We have to stop using both terms as synonyms. Receive some messages. Uh, for example, are there some other activities instead of NaOH? First, there is no geopolymer activator. There is a reagent a reactive ingredient or hardener. We are using alkalis, of course, NaOH, KOH, lithium, uh, sodium silicate, potassium silicates, or acidic medium, we use also acidic. Second, there is nothing to activate because metacaoline is by nature super reactive. So you don't have to activate, it is a reactive material. The glass in fly ash is also very easy to depolymerize. We don't dissolve, destroy uh, everything. We just uh, make it more reactive. It's totally different system. And this is how a geopolymer ceramic looks like, a polysilate siloxo geopolymer ceramic. You can do very fine materials. And it is with this technology, the polymer chemistry applied with a proper knowledge that gives confidence for customers to invest in big projects like this first public building made out of geopolymer cement. It, it is the Global Change Institute at the University of Queensland, Brisbane in Australia. And then building a whole new airport, including the terminal building and the taxiways with 100,000 tons of geopolymer concrete. Why? Because we must follow geopolymerization mechanism, which starts with alkalination. Alkalination is not alkali activation. It has nothing to do. We continue with depolymerization of silicates, gel formation of oligosilates, polycondensation, reticulation networking, geopolymer sonification. So they refuse to understand and follow the principles of polymerization. How can these people be able to develop commercial applications, finding the good formula, solve problems, if they don't understand the true chemical mechanism? They will fail. It is obvious. 
If you want to remember one thing of my presentation, it is this one. I suggest you copy and write down the next five slides, including this one, and take photos with your phone, or better, take a video of this part, or watch again this uh, video, this part in YouTube. I give you 10 seconds to prepare your phone, uh, because it will give you all the information you need to, uh, to start. Okay, so for the preparation, for the geopolymer preparation process, nothing is left to chance. It follows the chemical reaction. We start with alkalination, then depolymerization of silicates, then gel formation of oligosilates, polycondensation, reticulation networking, geopolymer solidification. These are the six steps of geopolymer uh, chemical reaction. And each of these chemical steps is related to a process. Each step can be finely tuned to match your specs. Alkalination is the mixing of silicate and the aluminosilicate precursor. Depolymerization of silicate is the mixing time and mixing method. Gel formation of oligosilate is related to the resting time or aging if you need it. Polycondensation, it's starting to harden. Reticulation networking relates to curing time and curing temperature. Geopolymer solidif solidification is the final hardening. And because you understand now the real process, you know what to do to solve any problem occurring during the reaction. If you, there's something wrong in the mixing time and mixing method, you will have a bad depolymerization of silicates. If uh, you don't use the right curing time and due, curing temperature, the network will be weak and so on and so on. So you understand what is happening and you know where to act to solve this problem or to improve your properties. So you understand that those who are using the Cash Nash or Portland cement chemistry to explain the chemical reaction are unable to solve any problem. To be very clear, a hydrate chemistry is not a simplified version of a polymer chemistry. The systems are very different. They refuse to learn, so they stay with poor results, poor knowledge, and poor solutions. They cannot progress and develop because they are trapped in a wrong chemistry. Those who are serious about geopolymers comply with these mandatory steps. Number one, no U precursor. All metacaoline, all fly ash, all slag are different. There is no standard precursor. Don't follow what is written in scientific papers. It does not work with your own materials. But you can trust industrial products manufactured specifically for geopolymer, like some silicates or metacaolines. Some of them are very specific, specifically manufactured for geopolymers, so you can trust it. All formula are different and must be calculated accordingly. What is the amount of aluminosilicates, IL-203, in your metacaoline, fly ash, and slag? You must know the chemical and mineralogical composition of all your materials. You must test and choose them for their reactivity. Don't use materials that are not reactive. For example, take only class F fly ash with no lime CAO in it. Number three. Calculate the formula with ratio potassium or sodium to aluminium equals 1. Once you know the amount of IL-203, you can calculate your formula. Respecting the ratio sodium to aluminium equals 1 guarantees there will be no leachates, no blooming of free salt, no shrinkage, no cracks, with enough fillers, of course. It will provide good chemical and structural stability. I repeat, because it's very important. Once you know the amount of IL-203, you can calculate your formula, and respecting this ratio, 
sodium to aluminum equals one guarantees there will be no leachate or blooming of free salt, no shrinkage, no cracks with enough fillers. It will provide good chemical and structural stability. There is no formula like, let's take 40% of silicate, 50% of fly ash, 10% of slag, and you're, and you're good. No. It is a very precise recipe according to the amount of aluminosilicate you have in your ingredients. Now we start to see more and more papers stating that their formula uh, are, is respecting this ratio sodium or potassium to aluminum is equals one. So it's a good sign that they are understanding what they are doing. Number four. Ratio silicone to aluminum equals two, which is not the same as the previous one, gives you a rigid three-dimensional macromolecular structure, which is perfect for cement. It is a polymer. It is not a hydrate. It is not difficult to manufacture. You only need simple equipment, but you must respect its chemistry. You can't make a polymer by following a hydrate process and mixed design. At the end of my presentation, you will know how to acquire this knowledge. So how to calculate this ratio uh, sodium to aluminum equals one? This is an example for a ceramic-like geopolymer with only two ingredients, silicate and metacaoline. And this is the, uh, uh, the formula. We, have, we start with 100 grams of liquid silicate, multiplying by A, which is the percentage of K2O or Ni2O in liquid. This percentage is uh, given by the supplier of uh, your silicate, and you multiply it by the molecular weight of Il2O3, divided by the molecular weight of K2O or, or Ni2O, multiplied by B, which is the percentage of il 3 here it is metacaoline. Uh, this percentage is uh, given by your supplier. So I have suppliers in Europe for a silicate and metacaoline, and they send me the spec sheet with the percentage of il 3 in their products and K2O also. Uh, so I get this formula. Uh, in Europe, I, I bought, I buy this silicate, this potassium silicate called Geosil and mix it with Metamax, which is a metacoline. So I have 100 grams of silicate multiplied by 21.48% of K2O in the silicate. This number is provided by the uh, silicate supplier, multiplying by the molar rate of I2O3, divided by the molar rate of uh, potassium uh, K2O, multiplied by 43.8% percent of Il2O3 in metacaoline. So in the end, I have 400 grams of silicate, of liquid silicate, I add 53.08 grams of metacaoline, of this metacaoline. So you see that the percentage and the formula will be different with your own ingredients. Now you know how to calculate a very simple formula with a ratio sodium to aluminum equals one. You can calculate a more, a more complicated one for cement with three different aluminosilicate precursors. Uh, we have fly ash, metacaroline, and slags. They all have their IL-203. <clears throat> Uh, so I will not enter into all the details because it is a four hour course, uh, but I want you to show uh, what it looks like, the end results. So please don't copy it. It will not work with your materials. This formula and all percentages are fictitious examples. So we start with the base, which is 100 grams of silicate, and then we add water, and we start to calculate how much aluminosilicates we need to add. For fly ash, for example, we have uh, here 30% of Il203, but we don't calculate 30%, uh, we only use 6%. I will not explain why we use 6% of Il203 in the calculation. Uh, it's part uh, of uh, the knowledge you will acquire in the book, I will talk about it later. 
then we add a little bit of metacaoline, which has 40% of IL-203, and we end up with this number. And slag, we have uh, here 12% of IL-203 and slag. We divide it by two because only half is reacting. Again, I will not enter into the details why it is so. Um, then we add mineral fillers and water for fluidity. So these are 100 grams of silicate, 40 grams of water, 370 grams of fly ash, 13.9 grams of metacaoline, 20 grams of slag, whatever mineral filler you need to add. And if you need some fluidity, 10 or below. So you have a formula, a very specific formula that follow the chemistry. But don't forget that you have also a specific process. Don't mix everything together at the same time. We add these ingredients on uh, one at a time by respecting this specific order. It is a polymer. It is not a hydrate. You must follow its kinetics. You must follow the synthesis group. You must follow this mix design. Um, so, uh, sorry. Yes, this mix design. So please uh, respect this order of mixing. Again, I will not enter into all the details. You will have lots of questions, I understand. Uh, and ex I will not explain why it is so and so. At the end of my presentation, you will know how to acquire this knowledge. So, and if it is too complicated because you have never done this kind of work before, because you know nothing in chemistry, build a team, ask a chemist, find a chemist that will do all the math, all the calculation for you. If your job is only to work on mixed design, of course you don't understand what I am talking about. Don't be ashamed because chemistry is not your thing. So please ask a chemist to help you. For a chemist, everything I present here are basic knowledge. It is very easy to understand. So you will succeed in your formulation and do a good job. You will not regret it. Create your team to do a good job. This is the best piece of advice I can give you today if you are struggling with geopolymer chemistry. This way you will grow a great confidence in the geopolymer technology. Why so long? Number two, the RELAM committee on IIM. This is exactly what happened here. They have not asked for a chemist and they propagate false information. The RELAM is the International Union of Laboratories and Experts in Construction Materials and there is an uh, alkali activated materials committee inside it. A group of scientists led by John Provis published a report it is the propaganda of this group that allows many scientists and civil engineers to mistaking alkali activation for geopolymers, fueling confusion, using them as synonyms without understanding what they really are. Notes on terminology. In the context of this report, the term alkali activated materials and geopolymer are at least worthy of some comment. AAM is the broadest classification encompassing essentially any binder system derived by the reaction of an alkali metal source. Geopolymers are in many instances viewed as a subset of AAMs where the binding phase is almost exclusively aluminosilicate and highly coordinated. The distinction between the classification is shown schematically in figure 2 this is obviously a highly simplified view of the chemistry of concrete forming system. Geopolymers are shown here as a subset of AAM with the highest aluminum and lowest calcium concentration. So we have here the, uh, the figure, we have the big AAM ratio and inside we find geopolymer. This classification for geopolymer as a subset of alkali activation uh, materials is wrong. The polymer chemistry is radically different compared to the hydrate or precipitate chemistry. In this RELAM report, 
John Provis and his group claims that both terms are synonyms and are promoting a misleading scientific belief. We receive some, some letters. I am a PhD student in civil engineering interested in producing geopolymer concrete from several byproducts. But in your publication, you state that geopolymer is not an alkali activated product, whereas other publications are claiming that there is no difference between the two. I got confused. Since we started the campaign, a lot of scientists realized that they have been fooled by a small group of people. So what is the truth? Geopolymers are high molecular, macromolecules, polymer, alkali activated materials, AM with NASH, CASH, are hydrates, not polymers. They cannot be called geopolymers. These are two different systems. It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonym. Alkali activation is a wrong terminology for geopolymers. So we organized a campaign against this uh, misleading information with four videos. The number of views in, at the Geopolymer Institute's website and on YouTube as of March uh, 2021, it's a tremendous success. Now, very few papers are mixing both terms. Either they use AAM or geopolymers, but use the right term because they work on the right chemistry, either AAM following the AAM process or geopolymer following the geopolymeric process. Now, more people are educated with the proper knowledge, but today some are still ignoring this problem. So be extremely cautious. When you read papers about fly ash cement dating from year 2000 to 2017, it is 17 years of fighting against people who want to hijack and rob the geopolymer concept with misleading information. And each time you read AAM as known as geopolymers and so forth, this sentence is the clue that they ignore what is an alkali activated material is and what a geopolymer is. They want to find uh, something in between the best of both worlds, but it doesn't exist because they are not similar. Most of the time, they simply copy what others have done, hoping that their colleagues know what they are doing. And in the end, their results are pure rubbish. The absence of understanding creates a lack of confidence in the technology. So this is not a pure wording or scientific dispute. It is not using one word for another. It matters. It is important because these people are creating bad products with lots of drawbacks and failures, which in return creates a lack of confidence in the technology. For example, you will find in papers where they write, geopolymer is known for its high shrinkage, really? For its blooming and salt migration, are you kidding? For its cracks, uh, are you crazy? And we will try to solve these inherent problems and so forth. These so-called inherent problems never happen when you understand the chemistry. Remember what I said lately when you must respect the ratio sodium to aluminum equals one? So yes, it matters. It is not an intellectual dispute between two scientific approach. Now, most people understand that this is a dead end and they are willing to learn the proper knowledge. And if you are still not convinced, I want to illustrate this with a very simple and straightforward example. After pouring the concrete slurry, are you saying, let it dry? Let it dry for 28 days in water? Are you really saying that? It is okay when a layman is mistaking drying with hardening. No, concrete sets or hardens. Drying is another process. But what if a civil engineer an educated professional is saying this, using one precise word for another, creating confusion and misleading information. 
You will disagree, of course. You will immediately understand that this person does not know what he's doing, or what he's talking about. You don't trust his work. This illustrates exactly what we are fighting against. Alkali-activated materials are not geopolymers. A hydrate is not a polymer. Cash and Nash are not the good terminology for geopolymers, as well as drying is not hardening. Technical words convey specific meanings which help us to understand the process. Why so long? Three, for civil engineers, alkali equals danger. They have been told geopolymer equals alkali-activated materials. I am sorry to insist, but this wrong knowledge was very toxic among civil engineers. Yes, it took 30 years to get rid of all of these. For civil and cement engineers, alkali is very dangerous with cement. It creates cracks, leachates, corrosion, failures in the structures. It is something they must avoid. Despite the fact proven since 1993, 28 years ago by several studies, the geopolymer chemistry is very different from Portland chemistry, for Portland cement, where alkali is handled very differently. Here is a simple example. We have <clears throat> uh, calculating the alkali aggregate reaction on Portland and geopolymer cement. Uh, on the blue line, blue spot, we have Portland with 1.2% of Na2O equivalent. And in gray, we have a geopolymer cement with nine times more K2O. And you see after 250 days, the expansion is, there's no expansion, nothing is happening. Whereas with Portland cement, there's a small expansion, which uh, yielding alkali aggregate reaction. There's nothing like that with geopolymer cement. Because of that, there is no corrosion with rebars. You can use any mineral fillers. For example, you can use granite. You can use sea water, salty water, instead of drinking water. So geopolymer cement is much more tolerant and versatile than Portland cement in hazardous chemical situations. Why so long? Standards and regulations. This explains the problems we were confronted to in the USA in 1984 when we invented the first geopolymer cement, the pyramid. It was not a geopolymer cement. It was a blended Portland cement. Professor Joseph Davidovitz wrote a review. You can download this paper for free at the Geopolymer Institute website and look for paper number 21 about it. I read, the existing Portland cement standards are not adapted to geopolymer cement. They must be created by, a, by an ad hoc committee, yet to do so requires also the presence of standard geopolymer cements. Presently, every expert is providing his own recipe based on local raw materials, waste by products or extracted. There is a need for selecting the right geopolymer cement category. We suggested to select two categories, namely slag fly ash based geopolymer cement. Fly ashes are available in many countries or rock based metacaoline cement, cement uh, geopolymer cement. This raw material is present in all countries throughout the globe. The European standards EN206 has a restriction that potential binders should comply with these standards, which contains Portland cement clinker and therefore technically excludes geopolymers. So we can do geopolymer cement in Europe. We must use Portland cement clinker only. Australian standards for country structures AS3000 does not specify Portland cement based concrete. The components of standard are primarily performance based, which is much better. You can use any kind of binder. In the USA, recent adoption of a new STM specification represents an important development in this area. 
It simply requires that the cement meet physical performance test requirements. Uh, and especially the Colorado Department of Trans Transportation has been a leader in the use of performance specified cement and has used them on a number of highway projects. In India, uh, I believe that you only need to put 1% of clinker to respect the standards. So everything is open in uh, your country. In conclusion, you see that there's not only business consideration in the success of a new materials, investment, money, markets, products. You had to fight against preconceived ideas and cliches. We had to battle against personal consideration from different people, from lobby, from other groups who believe that geopolymer cement is a threat to their business. Remember that the Portland cement lobby is a thread that we use slag and fly ash only for us. And finally, we had to find a way to deal with legal matters and standards. It took 30 years, starting from an experiment, a small specialized market, to know uh, to now a broader business. Today, we have very few cement applications with fly ash, mine tailings, or other waste because of standards, regulations. This is the truth. Fly ashes are all different from different origin, different quality, different composition, different ages, different quantity available. Same for mine tailings. Fly ash and mine tailings are wastes not a standardized materials with stable composition. One single uh, ordinary Portland cement factory in Europe produces 1 million ton per year with regular quality and quantity. Fly ash and mine tailings are exotic in everything. They are unable to provide such constant production needs. So regulation is the true problem in a business that requires standard materials. Do you know that cement is as regulated as finance? Everything is codified because of insurances, warranty, safety, the market is closed. But there are room for development, for example, in repair, which, is, which has only performance-based standards. You find anything, any materials in precast because it's an end product. It's performance based only soil stabilization or in difficult environment with salt, acids, corrosive chemicals. Today's applications are niche market, but with high value. When we come back to the list of geopolymer commercial applications, they are all problem solving solutions and products aiming at one specific market only. They are very specialized. They are all in niche markets, but with high value added. And regarding cement, all geopolymer cement solutions have better properties than Portland cement that does not provide, because when Portland cement is weak, there is no regulation. So geopolymer cement is OK. The solution don't sell a material. If you want to do geopolymer cement to save the world against CO2 emission, you will fail because regulation is here to forbid you doing it. Selling a simple material is a bad idea. So sell a solution that people are willing to pay for. Those who succeed in finding solution where Portland cement is weak are succeeding. Regulation will allow you to do it. And don't start your development with the cost in mind. You will fail. Think about the properties first. The cost will come after. Here is an example from uh, Kiran Global, the first Indian silicate supplier that is selling silicates for geopolymer only. Other suppliers have followed and you will find them easily. You know that potassium uh, silicate is twice more expensive than sodium silicate, but it holds different properties, different viscosity and process. However, the end product, the final concrete paid by the customer has almost the same price because the way to develop uh, the formula with two different silicates yields to 
the same price in the end. So uh, don't based, don't start your development with cost in mind, purchase cost. <clears throat> Think of the criteria, uh, the uh, performance. In the end, purchase cost is a wrong criteria for selecting a material. Last word, and I will almost finish. We have launched the new edition of the book, Geopolymer Chemistry and Application. <clears throat> the previous fourth edition was released in 2015. Five years later, the fifth edition contains 40 additional pages with more practical data, together with new scientific and technological knowledge. All chapters and all previous editions of the previous editions have been updated. We added two new chapters, now totalizing 28 chapters namely a new chapters in 11 titled ferrosilate geopolymers and a new chapter 21 titled how to quantify and develop geopolymer formulas this chapter 21 the one i was referring lately is a must have for everybody it alone justifies the purchase of the new edition it explains how to select raw materials how to calculate a formula and it provides a tool aimed at getting optimal results in a very pragmatic way. As you already know, the Geopolymer Chemistry and Applications book is a textbook, a reference book, instead of being a collection of scientific papers. If you buy it from the Geopolymer Institute website, there's a coupon to get 20% off for students, or ask your university library to buy it for you if it's too expensive. It is distributed worldwide with regular connection, so they know how to do it. We edited this new edition with a simple goal in mind, being more practical, to propose a method which will allow a geopolymer material to be formulated and develop. All the scientific knowledge is finding its direct applications in the process of developing and implementing a novel geopolymer materials. Without a deep understanding of geopolymer chemistry, all research and development efforts are arbitrary. And if you need the help of a chemist, find one in your organization. So the main update, updates recommend a series of good practice based on proper knowledge. Certainly, there are many different methods disclosed in the scientific literature, giving the misleading impression that a specific standardized procedure has been comprehensively tested when it has not. If inconsistent methods are used, our experience shows that the resulting mechanical properties and long-term stability will fluctuate, generating lack of confidence in the technology. I know you will appreciate this pragmatic approach that was lacking in previous editions, they will give you the proper foundations in developing new geopolymer materials. The purpose of the Geopolymer Institute is to make the promotion of the chemistry with a website, publishing books, organizing conferences and webinars. So we have a vet website. Do not hesitate to subscribe to our newsletter to never miss an update. And we share lots of information here, technical papers and in archaeology also. We have lots of very, very good videos. I want you to watch. You will learn many, many things. And we have our boot camp. The Geopolymer camp is at the opposite of a classical scientific conference with a diversity of backgrounds, variety of topics, easy exchange and connection. It's really business oriented. And you meet with people from all over the world to build a network. 50% are from the industry at large, 35% are academic, 15 are independent, and we hope that we will be able to organize this event. We are crossing our fingers uh, and we will do it even if we had to limit the number of participants. So this is the end of my presentation. I told you there will be no theory, um, but only pragmatic information. I hope you have learned some useful information today. Uh, I will be available in the chat section for the next half hour uh, so I can answer some of your questions. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Ralph. 
that was a tremendous brainstorming and a really wonderful session which you have given it's a big bundle of knowledge the amount of uh, information the myths and realities you have put forth and uh, you know there are so much of research which is happening in india and all the uh, points which you have put forth are really worth taking and then i'm sure people are going to go back with a lot of questions in their mind what to do what not to do thanks a lot it is uh, it's great listening to you and uh, dr joseph davidovitz a uh, wonderful time we had now before going in i am sure as you have said absence of knowledge make gives a lo lot of uh, lack of confidence so this uh, uh, question and answer session uh, a little while away from now would definitely give further confidence to all the users of geopolymer concrete before we go ahead with the question and answer session we have a small uh, a presentation by the sponsors we are very much thankful to our sponsors uh vrmx and uh, uh one uh kutua kutua silicates so we are very much thankful to both the sponsors for uh, being a part of today's event just a couple of minutes a small presentation about the sponsors so after the presentation uh, we are going to have a question and answer session uh, so it's visible oh, it's not it just a minute i think my network is a little slow yeah i think i'll uh, try again after a couple of minutes there is some network issue it is a little slow uh i will stop sharing this and meanwhile we'll proceed with the question and answer session and my personal thanks once again to the sponsors of this event uh, vrmx and uh, who was uh, in, dr murli dharan who was instrumental in uh, helping us get the sponsor so thanks to murli dharan sir and uh, now uh, we have another sponsor who's kotwa silicates thank you very much and now i would uh, request the participants to raise a few questions i am sure everybody is very very eager to discuss a lot of points with the founder and uh, the the legacy being carried over by his younger son so the you are wonderful over here uh, now i would request the uh, moderator to leave the chat box open and if somebody would like to ask orally you can just raise your hand we will unmute you so now over to the question and answer session I I prefer that people write a question in the chat the chat section if it is written right. uh I will know I will we will understand everything there will be no sound of problems yes. I please. I Thank agree you. on that so please kindly post your questions on the chat box that's much easier Ah, d'accord. If you have some questions, you can raise your questions. What is your opinion about red bud geopolymer based concrete? It doesn't work. Yes. Never. <laughs> there's there's no solution. Which is the best mineral admixture to be used in making geopolymer concrete? The granite. Gr uh, granite, yes. Granite-like materials. Uh, calcium is also good. Limestone. Yes. Limestone. Yes. Several limestone, granite. Uh, in fact, uh, almost everything, if it doesn't get any carbon, it, it's working. Um, we don't like 
Uh, no, in fact, I will say the differently. We like to have mineral fillers that will provide a chemical bonding between a geopolymer binder and the filler. Silico aluminate. Some silico aluminate binder, preferably, will provide a chemical bonding together. Yes. So you will increase your uh, mechanical strength. If you are using, for example, sand, classical sand, which, if, um, uh, quartz. Uh, which is quartz, there is no chemical bonding on it because the structure is very closed it's uh, crystalline and so, so forth, yeah. and so forth so you don't have a good adhesion and you have a very average uh, mechanical properties so uh, any silico aluminates based which will provide a chemical bonding between the on two the surface. on the surface will provide a very good uh, mechanical uh, properties yes uh, how to check molecular weight of single polymer unit? Well, this is a chemist that will do it. A chemist will do it, yeah. <clears throat> is there a chance to do research for my PhD? There are many universities now who are doing uh, PhDs on geopolymer. Uh, find a good team uh, yes. that are already doing it. Uh, there are now more and more. Well, the problem that we don't know the... Uh, uh, the, the uh, what is provided in India? We are not Indian. No, <laughs> so <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea. Uh, how can I implement in Indian market? Uh, the I don't know. I'm not a businessman, <laughs> especially <laughs> in India. Uh, uh, so just... is that economical as ordinary Portland cement? No. Uh, no, because uh, Portland cement is such a mass produced material that you can't compete yet today. No. But when Portland cement is weak, has bad properties because, uh, because of everything, uh, it is more economical because you don't add any, uh, uh, any chemicals in it and so forth and so forth and so forth. No. Uh, no, but. Uh, if you are using only silicates and fly ash, no. If you want to use rock-based yeah. metacol in geopolymer, yes, you're starting. <clears throat> so the, the, the question is good. Is that economical as ordinary Portland cement? The answer I've just given, geopolymer cement is more expensive as ordinary Portland cement. Yes, the purchase cost. I just said that the purchase cost is not a good criteria for selecting a material. It's the uh, final cost for the end customer that is important. Remember the first buildings uh, in Australia, rem the airport is built in geopolymer and the airport building, the whole airport taxiways and building is as expensive as Portland cement <clears throat> because even if the, the, the geopolymer cement was more expensive by, uh, I think, 40%, they have saved a tremendous amount in, in the equipment in and time. in time. So uh, instead of doing it in six Just months, in renting uh, um, big equipments to do these taxiways and so forth, uh, six months of labor, they did it in three months only. So, and they told us that the, this is the final cost that the customer will have to pay. And 50% of the cost was the material and the 50% of the cost is from the renting of the equipment and the labor. So in the end, if you are thinking at the final cost paid by the customer, including equipment and labor, it is as cheap as Portland cement, you see? Wow. But if you are reasoning in only purchase cost, uh, as lots of people are doing when they are developing a solution, Yes, of course, the numbers are wrong. You need to see the, uh, the, the very end cost. Okay, how to check how much CO2 is emitted? Uh, pff, there are professionals who, who can do it. Can, I, can we use wastewater in geopolymer concrete? Yes, yes provided there is uh, very few organic 
uh, materials in it. Uh, any uh, carbon organic materials will or sulfur sulfur yeah will uh, be a problem with but, the chemical reaction but uh, yes um <clears throat> we still why still geopolymer technology is not implemented in India commercially? There are some, or oh, there are plenty. No, no, there are plenty of people who are doing it now. The, yes. Most of them, are talking about regulation and standards, this is the main problem. Lots of them are doing a precast or repairs and so on. What is the difference between AAC um, and geopolymer concrete? There are four videos. There are four videos and I've done just a one hour talk. So yes. if you were sleeping, I'm sorry. <laughs> what should we do if you want to... The concentration of alkali is less with better binding? Uh, no, okay. Uh, no. During, okay. Um, one good piece of advice, don't do your silicate yourself mixing in uh, NOH and so on just ask then you have now uh, three or four uh, silicates manufacturer in India um, supplying silicates especially for geopolymers so they have a, a quality control product please uh, ask them to ship you samples of oh. this and it will ease the everything don't don't do it yourself because uh making silicates is just it's not just uh adding an wage into silicate mix it and do it no it's much more complicated than that uh it's not just a simple mix i'm sorry uh simplify your development use the silicate uh manufactured by professionals they are you will have higher qualities higher um, uh, manufacturing process will be better and uh, mechanical uh, properties will also be better uh, really simplified your, your development with that they are uh, product uh, developed for geopolymers please use them promote them it's very important you ask why there's no business in geopolymers and if you start doing it by yourself and not helping business the people the industry to start and promote it by saying hey they are manufacturing good products it's working i have good properties from them by these precursors from this company you must be part of the process so don't complain if nobody is doing it in india if you don't use what uh, business people are trying to do also so build the team please interaction uh, sure. No. Is activator and activated the no, same no. or different? No, 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 no. Activated. And we are using chemicals. Um, to be very clear, when you activate, you activate an inert material. You, you can activate sand. Yeah. For example, quartz sand, because it's totally inert. I mean, if you put a very, very corrosive and strong alkaline in it, you will dissolve it. So you activate it. Here we are dealing with metacaoline slag and fly ash. Not fly ash. Are, no more. Some, yes, some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which are very reactive. They are already open to reaction. So you don't need to activate with a very strong chemicals. It's useless. It's pointless. So there's nothing to activate. Um, self well, okay what about using geopolymer material for pavement materials they are doing it in australia now in real life uh, you will find it on the internet what is the temperature effect on polymer concrete compared to normal temperature from polymer concrete i, I don't understand the question it's, it has to be more specific yeah. Dr. Ralph, uh, uh, yes. we have uh, Dr. Rajmane raising his hand. He met okay. you there. Uh, he met uh, Dr. Joseph uh, Davidovitz uh, there in your institute. Sir uh, Rajmane, Dr. Rajmane, sir? Are, are you able yes, to sir. hear me? Yeah, we are yeah, hearing Rajmane. you, sir. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon from here, uh, Professor Davidovitz. 
So you can yeah. switch on your video, maybe, sir, uh, Professor. No, no, video is not working for oh, me. Okay, I will fine, only fine. Uh, speak audio only. Sure, okay. sure, sure. Yeah, uh, please. Professor David Ovitz and uh, Ralph, we have met and uh, we had a chance to talk to them. Uh, today, Ralph had made a real clear meaning of the geopolymer. Because in India, nobody works on geopolymer. I'm using the word nobody. Because everybody looks at uh, sodium silicate solution, sodium matrix solution, and uh, add a plies and gigas and compress strength only. Nobody bothers about finding the microstructure or polymeric structure. This is my comment. So today's the Ralph lecture and Professor David Ravitz has to be really understood that we are talking about polymerization, not reaction. Polymerization, not hydration. This point. Okay. Uh, I want to ask Ralph one small uh, query. You mentioned about the Al2O3 in fly ash. Okay. And also you mentioned about alumina and the sodium uh, actually, uh, uh, ratio to be one. How do we calculate how much of aluminum oxide of the fly ash is useful for our reaction? How do you calculate? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so far, uh, we have base uh, now. Uh, we are only uh, working on. You have fly ash. Fly ash are spheres. It's a fume. These are spheres. We don't dissolve the whole product as what people are doing with alkali activation. We only work on the surface of the spheres of fly ash. The silicon spheres provides very good mechanical properties. So we don't destroy it. We only want uh, to uh, make the surface of the sphere reacting. And um, when you have the, the, the analysis and you read that these for example, 30% of IL-203 in this fly ash, which is a total amount, which is uh, the total amount if you dissolve completely the fly ash, which is not what we are, we are doing because we, don't, we are not yeah, we are th alkaline. this corrosive, not this alkaline. So uh, uh, it's, um, they, so far, nobody has uh, calculated uh, this, um, how many IL-203 will be part of the reaction. In fact, it's only a trial and error uh, formula. We state that we only use uh, a quarter of this IL-203, which is 6% uh, for if it's 30% uh, of IL-203, uh, a quarter of this will be part uh, of the of the system uh, because it is surrounded by <clears throat> the, the spheres and today there is uh, nobody has done it because nobody is uh, uh, all fly ash are different this this is the main problem they no, are no, reacting that, differently that i agree with you so and so. i wanted to ask you in silicon dioxide there is a uh, concept of glassiness and amorphous nature uh, similar concept is available for Al2O3 also. What I meant also is molite is a crystalline compound. Can we say all the molite is uh, available for our reaction or not? Because usually they don't take it as available for reaction. Just yes, yes. to comment on that. Yes, some it is. Yes. Yes. Some, uh, some are taking and, it, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You have to <laughs> you have to try. Some are more reactive than the others. Uh, sometimes you can put it in your silicate to manufacture a silicate. Uh, as it's the same with silica fume, also, which is the same problem. Some of them are very active. Uh, some of them are not. Uh, it's um, because they are all manufactured differently. All the uh, electrical power plants are different using calls from so-and-so. It's the main problem. It's the main problem with fly ash. It's not a standardized uh, material. So uh, experience, experimenting is very, very important. Uh, with regard to, yes. May I add Dr. something? Madhavi, shall I ask one Rajame, Rajame. I think we are running out of time. Uh, Dr. Joseph would like to say something. And uh, sir, Dr. Joseph, yes, please yes. proceed and yes. then we'll. Yes. yes. Dr. Rajamane. Don't uh, thank forget. You, thank you. Thank you. Don't Great forget. Yeah. 
Don't forget that I presently recommend to develop the ferrocylate geopolymer. Okay. 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 Why? Because the ferrocylate geopolymer is based exclusively on geological resources. Okay. And the geological resources are very, very, very consistent in terms of property, long term uh, properties, long term constitution. This is why. So the discussion about fly ash and so forth is only for very special niche application or to get rid of the quantity that has been stored. But uh, it is no longer our purpose to develop and promote it. So the solution is to develop in your country the exploitations of the huge amount of geological material that contains iron that are lateritic based and so forth that are available uh, i remember having made a keynote on that subject uh, i guess uh, seven years ago where i showed to where the locations of uh, all of the uh, um, ferro um, the um, minerals that contains iron reactive ions are located and it is in that case we will reach the stability of a portland cement exploitation they are exploiting a geological resource layer very precise and which uh, 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 yield uh, a cement production for uh, 30 years or 40 years or 60 years, but they know exactly what they are doing. And this is the solution. And it is the standardization of the product. So please try to start with iron-based rock materials. Okay, thank you, thank you, very nice. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. It was you know, amazing listening to both of you. And uh, the questions are also very well taken. Yes, Dr. Ralph, please. Uh, ju just to end, I just uh, look at all the uh, questions in the chat. Uh, I do finish. Uh, you have lots of uh, information in the book, Geopolymer Chemistry and Application. If you can buy it, ask your library to buy it for you. It is worldwide distributed. You will have all the answers you are looking for, uh, which are very basic. Second, lots of questions about the silicate and alkaline. I repeat, use the silicate provided, manufactured by you comp the company in India. They are doing specific for geopolymers. Uh, it will save you a lot of time and gives you much better properties. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wonderful. I'm sure you'll, your book would be a treasure house of knowledge for all those who are working on geopolymer. And uh, sorry, we are not able to answer all the questions, to pose all the questions to the speakers because of paucity of time. We have two more speakers in line and uh, uh, they are available on the Geopolymer Institute. So you can directly call, mail them on, the, on their website and they'll, I'm sure they are going to respond to that. Uh, so thank you very much. We'll keep in touch a lot. So now uh, I would, uh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. Thank you, Dr. Ral. Very nice. Bye bye. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now I would request uh, Muthu Lakshmi to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Martin Sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm so glad and honored to introduce our next elite speaker, Dr. Martin Sir. Dr. Martin Sir is a professor at Toulouse University, France and Associate Professor at Sherbrooke University, Canada. He is the Deputy Director of the Laboratory for Materials and Durability of Construction at Toulouse, France. His research interests include low carbon concretes, mineral admixtures, alkali activated materials, and durability of concrete. He is a member of several RILEM technical committees focused on SEMs and alkali activated materials. He manages several projects with around 20 researchers working on the properties of alternative binders in concrete in partnership with several industrial groups, including an industrial chair on alkali activated materials. 
Warm welcome, sir. Thank you very much for this very nice introduction. I will share my screen. I hope everything will be fine. Uh, you should now. Yeah. Do you have Do you have the full screen? Yes, you have the yes, full screen? Okay. okay, thank you very much. Yes. So it's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. And the title of my presentation is, in fact, a, a very common question that we have from the industry. And uh, it is, uh, can we formulate a geopolymer or an alkali activated materials, materials or binders as Portland cement? Why is that? Why this question? That's because we have more than 100 years uh, of data of Portland cement. And of course, we are using it a lot in the industry. So uh, when we have an industrial partner wanting to work on that topic, uh, they usually ask uh, to us, uh, okay, how can we manage the formulation of this kind of material? So that's a, a really common question. And uh, what we know from Portland cement industry is that it is relatively easy to control the, the formulation of the Portland cement itself uh, in paste, mortar, or concrete. And usually we can make it by uh, fixing the cement quantity and the water binder ratio. And usually we have repeatable and reproducible uh, performances of the material. And here, what is the problem? It is much more complex uh, for geopolymers and other alkali activated uh, binders. Uh, I, would, I will not enter the controversy of uh, the name of all of it. Uh, I intentionally separate the geopolymer from the uh, alkali activated binder because it's true that it's not the same. And uh, I, I quite agree with a lot of things that uh, Professor Davidovitz's uh, father and son tell, told us earlier. So uh, it is still more complex than Portland cement itself because we have a lot of types of precursors. We can have fly ash, we can have GGBS, metacaoline, and a lot, of, a lot of other mineral materials available. So it's not so easy uh, to compare their, them because they are quite different. I will show it uh, just after that. Uh, usually we have to use more than water to make them react. If we put metacaoline in water, uh, probably it will not work uh, alone. So that's why we usually need what I call here an activator, but uh, okay, I don't want to enter in the controversy of the term itself, but uh, we still need something to make things uh, react. Uh, the range of these activators are, are quite wide and not universal, meaning that uh, some uh, chemicals working with metacaoline uh, might not work with others, especially uh, for GGBS. I will show it just after that. Uh, the water incorporated uh, can be in the reaction product, such as GGBS, but sometimes it is not, such as metacaoline. So it, it was it was well uh, shown earlier by the the, the, the presentation of uh, Dr. Davidovitz that uh, it can be very different. And we still have several questions from the industrial partners regarding the rheology. Uh, how can we put the concrete in place? Uh, what is the durability of this kind of material if we want to use it uh, for the construction? What is the, the corrosion problem that we could have? So uh, that's a lot of questions we have usually from the industry. So the, the objective here is to have a small discussion on the formulation of geopolymers and alkali activated binders, and also uh, show that it will probably be uh, difficult to master the formulation of these material as simply as for Portland cement. It is a little bit more complicated, but we can have very good materials at the end. So just to show a diagram, the, the Rankin diagram, uh, you're probably familiar with that. Uh, we, we show uh, silicon on one side, calcium on the other, and fi fi finally aluminum. And uh, what is interesting to see here is that uh, when we are going down to Portland cement, meaning that we add more calcium and we shift from uh, aluminum and silicon chemistry to calcium chemistry, uh, we are going through toward hydraulicity, meaning that uh, we don't have an hydraulic material here, but we will go to an hydraulic material, meaning that uh, we will have a lot of differences uh, in the activation system possible. 
And usually when we are going to toward OPC, uh, it means that uh, it will be probably uh, easier to make it react. Uh, I say here uh, to formulate because it's really easy to make to take a Portland cement to put water inside, it's enough. Uh, we will see that GGBS is not so hard to make uh, the reaction, but it can be a little bit harder when we are around here. And it was well, well uh, shown earlier by, by the other presentation by Professor Davidovitz. So what is the, if I make a, a small focus on the main precursor uh, and we can ask ourselves, okay, what, what are the characteristics of these precursors we need to know to formulate correctly these kind of materials? Uh, in general, uh, of course, we have to determine the amount of reactive phase inside the precursor itself. Uh, we see very often in the literature that uh, we use the overall chemical analysis and we say, okay, we have uh, X percent of silicon, X percent of aluminum inside, but uh, usually it's really not enough to be able to make the formulation correctly. Uh, it's not sufficient as a parameter, only the chemical analysis of the material, if we want to have good performance at the end. I take here an example for metacaoline, and we know that uh, these uh, calcine clays are rarely pure. You can see here uh, some kind of diagram, XRD diagram, uh, and uh, these are commercial metacaoline that can be found uh, on the market in Western Europe, for instance. And we see in this particular product that we have only 50% of metacaoline inside and the rest being uh, some other uh, materials such as non-active crystalline faces, such as quartz, sometimes a little bit of calcite, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, titanium oxide, some remaining value of kaolin, uh, kaolin it inside, and maybe sometimes if we overburn the metakaolin, we can have some mulite inside. Inside, and these uh, crystalline phases are usually with very low solubility, meaning that even if we put them in uh, an alkali uh, medium, it will probably not react too much. Uh, so uh, the, the total chemical analysis is not sufficient to characterize the potential reactivity of this metacaoline. And we need to determine the proportion of reactive phase. Uh, there's a lot of papers on that to uh, determine the amount really of silicon and aluminum uh, present inside that could be useful for the geopolymerization or for the reactivity. It's Itself. Just to show uh, on the other side, uh, for ground granulated blast furnace slag, uh, we, we still have a lot of slag uh, remaining in Western Europe and uh, over the world. And uh, even if we have very high contents of amorphous phase, because usually uh, most of the GGBS used in the industry is more than 95% of uh, glass inside. Uh, and at least in Western Europe, uh, they, are, they have very similar chemical composition and equivalent fineness. And what we can see, especially for uh, the uh, alkali activation, is that uh, sometimes we can have very different uh, uh, performance, especially at young age. You can see here for uh, three GGBS, commercially available GGBS uh, in Western Europe, you, you can see that even if we achieve uh, almost the same compressive strength at 28 days for, for the concrete, we, we can have very uh, big differences at, at young age. And uh, it is often a problem uh, when you have to design from the industrial, uh, for industrial projects, you have to design your, your material and you see such a difference. Although we have very similar reactivity with Portland cement, it means that uh, usually what we can say, and it's not only for actually activated materials, but it is al also true uh, for uh, binders containing a lot of GGBS inside, super sulfated cement and other kind of cement. Uh, th these materials are much more sensitive to, uh, to the nature of the slag itself uh, than Portland cement will be. So we, we have to take care of this kind of thing and study, uh, as it was said earlier, for a particular uh, material precursor, we have to make sure that it will work correctly and make some tests uh, to make sure that it will work better. 
So in, in terms of activator now, uh, what kind of activator we can use uh, with a given precursor? Uh, activator uh, usually are necessary uh, in these kind of mixes because uh, at best our material are some kind of hydraulics such as GGBS. If you put water in GGBS, uh, you wait for a long time, it will set probably because the glass will dissolve a little bit. Uh, you have a uh, chemistry uh, involving calcium, meaning that uh, probably uh, you will have some reactivity, but you, you, you have to push a little bit this kind of material. And at worst, it practically inert in the presence of, of water when we use neutral pH. You put metacaoline inside water, you can wait a lot of time uh, before having a set uh, of the material itself. So we need some something to boost a little bit the reactivity of the material. And usually uh, we are using uh, alkaline salts, the first column of the periodic table, not this one, of course, we are in French, so I, we, I found a very nice periodic table of wine, but that's not the one we are usually uh, using. Of course, we are using the classical uh, periodic table and uh, we can use especially sodium or potassium. Sometimes you will see in the literature some of person using lithium. We can find this, okay. Uh, and uh, these alkalis can be used as hydroxides, silicates, carbonate, even sulfate sometimes, especially with uh, GGBS, it works quite well. And uh, if I try, it's, it's a very simplified way of doing things, but uh, it's a very short presentation, meaning that uh, I try just to go very fast, very quick uh, on the subject by uh, putting three columns, one for GGBS and two others from Metacaoline and uh, class F fly ash, uh, by using four types of uh, alkali, uh, alkali, just put the pointer, so for four types of alkali, hydroxide, silicates, carbonate, and sulfate, uh, very, uh, that, that's an opinion for myself, but uh, it is shared by, by a lot of people. The, the main inconvenience uh, is that uh, some of them, some of these uh, activators are corrosive. It's the case for hydroxide and silicates. Uh, carbonates are not corrosive. Also the same for alkali sulfate, but uh, the, the reaction is quite slow after that. Uh, in terms of cost, I will not enter uh, on this, uh, although uh, same for the environmental impact, it can be a lot of debate. Uh, that's not the point here. So if we have a look at the GGBS, what we can see is uh, for, for me, the, 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 maybe the, the easiest one uh, is uh, alkali, alkali silicates uh, with very rapid kinetics. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I forgot to translate some, some, uh, some parts. Uh, great efficiency. Uh, but sometimes we have some problems at young age with when we are using this kind of uh, activator because we have very short uh, open time, meaning that uh, we only have sometimes may maybe half an hour uh, if we don't mix the GGBS with something else. Alkali alkal carbonate are, are working quite well also, but a little bit slow if they are used alone, uh, except at high concentration. So sometimes we, we try to mix some activators together to be able to have uh, good properties. Uh, alkali sulfate are working quite well also. That's the base of, um, of uh, super sulfated cement, uh, which is uh, maybe a little bit borderline uh, regarding the, the alkali activated materials, but it is still uh, sometimes uh, alkalized. And of course, hydroxide are, are working well also, uh, but often less efficient than uh, silicate. Uh, what is more difficult probably is when we go uh, around metacaoline and fly ash because uh, some of them are not working so well. The, the best one, uh, best in class is probably alkali silicates. Uh, it was said earlier, it works very well. Uh, I will not go further on that, but uh, otherwise it can be much more difficult if we use these uh, activators alone, uh, alkali carbonate and uh, alkali sulfate, uh, if we use them alone, they will not work so well with metacaoline, of course. So uh, the more uh, we quit the, um, the, the calcium chemistry, the, the more it is difficult to make the formulation. So uh, if we want to make the formulation, usually uh, the press 
the prescriptive approaches we find in the world, for instance, uh, EN206 in Europe, we fix the amount of binder, we fix the water binder ratio, and uh, the industrial partners are very comfortable with that. Uh, but when we want to do something else, in the case of uh, other kind of binders, such as uh, alkali activated binders and geopolymers, uh, of course, uh, we have the variety of the precursor. Uh, can we uh, can the quantity of binder be fixed uh, in kilogram per cubic meter? Probably not. It's not so easy to do that. Uh, where do we count the activator itself? So that's a lot of question we have uh, usually by our industrial partners. And uh, as I showed you uh, earlier, uh, the dependence of the precursor activating couple will also uh, be an issue here. So, uh, and uh, of course we have a variable role of the water uh, depending on the precursor activating a couple. If we use a metacaulin with, with sodium silicate or uh, potassium silicate, the water will not enter into the structure. If we are using a GGBS, it will be because we will have some uh, CASH at the end, meaning that we have very, we have very different kind of material. And it's not always easy to understand how it works. So the prescriptive, prescriptive approaches are probably compromised for this. And uh, we really think that performance-based approach will be adapted in the future for that. It was said earlier also. And that's the way we are working now. Try not to set at the beginning the amount of material, but we try to reach a performance at the end. It can be a compressive strength. It can be a rheology uh, issue. It can be a lot of durability aspects against corrosion, against other, other kind of uh, pathology we can have. So uh, the performance based approach is probably the good one here. So if uh, I uh, have a look at uh, GGBS, for instance, uh, as I told you, we have the production of cash. Uh, it is well known. Uh, it is quite common to express the activator as a percentage relative to the slag. It is working not quite well because uh, we are still in the calcium chemistry. So this one is much more easy uh, to, to manage. And uh, usually what we see is the more the activating rate is increased, the more effective is the activation itself. You can see it, can see it here with a 100% slag. Sorry again for the lack of, of uh, translation the compressive strength at one, two, and 28 days against the, the silicate amount uh, expressed in terms of uh, sodium. And we can see uh, some small thing uh, when we compare it to Portland cement, sometimes we have a lack of, uh, uh, the lack of activator is not very good at young age. We can see here at one day, if we don't put enough activator inside, we will not have enough uh, strength for uh, demolding. Uh, we will have have something uh, much more better if we put more activator, but the price is increasing. Uh, of course, uh, as it was said earlier, we must check at the end the overall cost, but it's not always easy to discuss with industrial partner who try to have a look at the overall, but they are focusing a lot on uh, the price of the materials itself. So sometimes we can have a very uh, low uh, reactivity at short term if we don't put enough uh, uh, alkali inside. Uh, we can have the possibility of a very strong start, uh, meaning that if we put 8% of equivalent sodium inside, we can have up to 40 MPA at one day, which is quite good when we compare it to a Portland cement. So it's very nice uh, to have this. But sometimes we have a lot of rheology problem if we are using slag alone with this kind of material. So that's the kind of deal, the things we have to deal with uh, when we uh, work uh, at an industrial level to um, implement this kind of technology on the market. Uh, the performance at 28 days could be as high as Portland Cement, no doubt put it. We can see that we, uh, we can reach up to 60 or even 70 MPA at 28 days, which is uh, very interesting for this kind of material. But uh, of course, uh, we can have variable activators within the same category. Uh, meaning that the ratio of silicon over alkali, uh, alkali will change a lot and will 
a lot influence also the, the, the last properties. We can also use uh, two activators at the same time. Uh, for instance, here using a little bit of cement as an activator also uh, in combination with uh, sodium silicate, for instance. Uh, that's funny here to see that uh, cement itself, it, it's not now the, the main material to do the concrete, to make the concrete is the, the material used as a chemical. And it, it's funny to see that sometimes. Uh, it, we can uh, reach very good uh, strength at one day with this kind of material. Uh, not very good, but uh, correct enough for, for demolding. We, we see that we, when we shift uh, from uh, only slag with uh, sodium silicate, with a little bit more of uh, cemented side, we, we can solve some problem of demolding by increasing the strength at young age. So it, it can be very interesting, but sometimes we have a decrease of performance at longer, longer term. We can see here at 28 days, we have a, a small decrease in performance. That's what we, that's what we see when sometimes we uh, put different activator together. So it, it's only to illustrate you uh, what we can do uh, to solve some problem, but sometimes it will uh, lead to other kind of problems itself. So uh, if I have a look now uh, with uh, low calcium content, uh, mainly metacaoline here, because we don't work too much with fly ash in France because we don't have it anymore anyway. So uh, the, the literature is saying that um, we should use uh, some ratio a molar ratio between the different oxides uh, forming the material silicon, aluminum, uh, sodium, and also water. And a question we, we have a lot, uh, should we systematically use this molar ratio of elements uh, to achieve uh, a, a required performance? Uh, are these molar ratio useful? Can we do without? That's really a, a big question we have very often. And uh, we are trying to work on this. And uh, when we have a look at this ratio, uh, take for, for instance, uh, the ratio silicon over aluminum. Uh, it can control a lot of things, uh, meaning that they are very useful when you understand how to uh, use them. Uh, you can control the performance versus time. Uh, I'm just showing here the uh, relative setting time against this ratio, silicon over aluminum, for four different metacaoline. And uh, what we can see is, is that uh, we can uh, delay the setting of the material itself uh, from a few hours. For, ex for example, we are able to manage the, 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 the setting time at three hours. And if we need to postpone uh, this setting time, we can do it by controlling uh, at least this ratio up to uh, several tens of hours. Sometimes we can reach also more than 50 hours with that. It could be very useful in some applications. So the, there is a factor up to 16, uh, at least by uh, changing this, uh, this ratio, uh, it, it's a, a way to uh, manage the setting time. So it's very useful for that. If we still use this, uh, this ratio, uh, we can also control the, the compressive strength. It was said earlier that uh, usually the, the silicone over aluminum uh, ratio was around four, uh, meaning uh, SiO2 over Al2O3, uh, we have to double to, to have the same thing. We can see here at seven days that uh, for uh, still four different kind of uh, metacaoline that we have uh, some optimum uh, value that can change over time. And where we are reaching the value around four that was said earlier. And it's quite easy to find uh, this kind of thing when we are trying to make the formulation of the material itself. Uh, and here, what is, inter what is interesting is that no matter which metacaoline is used, it is working quite well, but you have to use only the reactive fraction of the metacaoline itself, not count the quartz inside, not count the mulite inside. Uh, so uh, you have to take care of the characterization of the precursor itself. So uh, I, I quite agree with what was said earlier about this. So. Um, this, this molar ratio is very interesting. What about uh, the others? If we take the sodium over aluminum ratio, usually it is set around one. It was set earlier. Uh, what will happen if we don't use a, a value around one? So what 
can be said here is that if we low this ratio, uh, what we can see is probably a lower reactivity. We don't have enough alkalis inside to make the reaction uh, strong enough. And on the other side, uh, if we use much more than a value of one, we are probably will have a lot of free alkalis and we will have the appearance of a lot of efflorescence as you can see here. So you have to manage also this ratio. And that's true that a value around one is usually uh, acceptable for this kind of material. What about now the water solid ratio? That's something very important uh, for the Portland cement. And sometimes we see a molar ratio, water over sodium. Is it efficient uh, enough to control the material? In my sense, probably not, because uh, there is a strong interdependency of the molar ratio between them. That's the kind of molar ratio we can see in the literature. And uh, it is very difficult to set two of this molar ratio without impacting the water solid ratio inside. For instance, uh, uh, if uh, I have a look, closer look at the sodium aluminum ratio by keeping, uh, the, the, the next uh, graph I will show, I keep so, uh, silicon over aluminum constant and also water uh, to sodium constant. Uh, so if, if I change only the, the sodium aluminum ratio by keeping the other two constant, it means that we will probably uh, decrease the amount of precursor in order to keep these two constant and change only this one. In terms of uh, dry activator, it would not change a lot, uh, as we can see. And in terms of water, if we want, want to uh, have 100% of the constituent, it means that we will have to increase the water content. And at the end, if we have a look at the water solid ratio, it's the black uh, curve here, we see that if I try to keep this value constant and change only this molar ratio, sodium over aluminum, it means that it will increase a lot uh, the water solid ratio. And since uh, the water is not inside the structure, is polycondensation, it was said earlier, so the, the water is mainly rejected. It means that it will leave a lot of porosity and it will have a strong influence on the mechanical properties. Uh, I'm showing you here the, the effect, uh, we see here the, the well-known effect of water cement binder uh, for Portland cement. We see that uh, we can be around 60, 70. And if we increase a lot, of course, it will decrease the strength, but it will reach around maybe 40 MPa. If we do the same with geopolymer by just showing the water binder ratio, we show that uh, it will go for around 60 MPa, it, it, it will decrease a lot uh, until approximately, approximately zero at the, at the end. Meaning that we have a, sh a sharp decrease in performance when we had too much water. And we know in, in the, the industry that it's common, it's not good to do that, but a lot of, of person in the industry, we have a problem with rheology. Okay, we had some water inside. We know we will pay it for the Portland cement concrete, but it will be much more worse than that if we are doing it with geopolymer. Meaning that uh, not only the, the, the different ratio are important, but also in my, in my sense, uh, the water solid also should be uh, checked to make sure that we don't have too much problem after that. So to conclude, uh, I tried, it was a very short presentation, but to show you that uh, at an industrial point of view, we have a lot of questions uh, about uh, what characteristic do we need for the precursor? Okay, we need to know it as, as much as possible. What is the reactive part? What is the chemical composition? And what are the, the, uh, the aluminum and, and silicon content that will be involved in the reaction? What kind of activator can be used? Uh, we know that sodium silicate, potassium silicate are working quite well, but other one can be used sometimes. Uh, what are the par parameters that must be taken into account? Uh, the water solid ratio, of course, uh, and probably the molar ratio also. Uh, we, we should try to use them, uh, understand them, 
and try to use them correctly uh, in order to be able to make a, a good material uh, that could be used for industrial applications. And just to finish with uh, to say that uh, we will have um, uh, an online meeting soon, uh, uh, ACI Rylum meeting soon on alternative binders, including all the alkali activated materials. It will be held in June online and probably in two, 2023, uh, we will have the same uh, Congress again, OPE. Uh, to be in person in Toulouse. So you are welcome to uh, send us some abstract. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Martin. That was a very interesting session. Uh, it was very informative and a lot of uh, doubts and questions would be definitely waiting for you. Uh, I would just like to take a chance and see if the presentation sponsor's presentation is uh, uh, working out. Just give me a couple of seconds uh, before we go with the presentation. No, it's uh, still having some issue. Uh, but anyway, my hearty thanks to the sponsors of the day, VR Mix and uh, the Katuva Silicates, who have uh, given a wonderful support and motivated us to do this session. Thanks a lot uh, to both the organizations. Now I would leave the questions open uh, to Martins, uh, Dr. Martins. Now I would request to those who have not asked in the previous session, you are welcome to raise your questions. Now please give chance for others to raise the questions. So now the chat box is open. Dr. Martin, you would read yourself or you would want us to help you out? I, there, there's a lot of questions arriving, so I can take some of them. Uh, I, I have seen some of them arriving. So for instance, uh, for instance um, what is the curing for this kind of material? Uh, I, I must say that uh, we try not to cure at high temperature usually with our materials because uh, for industrial application, except if we are using them in precast industry, it's much more difficult to use high temperature on the, the, the field. So we try to develop formulation uh, without having so much at least temperature curing. Uh, we have to wait for the reaction to take place, but uh, usually sometimes we have very fast, uh, in, in some, in some application, we have very fast reaction. Uh, I saw a question also about one part, uh, geopolymer. Uh, of course, uh, that's what the industry wants. Uh, it's not so easy to use uh, an alkaline product, especially on the field. Uh, it, it can be done. Uh, it, it has been done. Uh, almost everywhere in the world until now. Uh, it's, not also, it's not always easy, especially in France, to use this because um, we are very restricted in the use of uh, alkali silicate. So it's not so easy to use, uh, but uh, we have some, uh, I had some video, uh, I did not have the time to present it today, but we try to uh, make some, some pieces, especially, especially in precast by using sodium silicate, it was working, working quite well. Uh, it was uh, possible to use it, but uh, not all the industrial partners are uh, agree to use that. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So we try to develop uh, the correct uh, chemistry for their own application. Uh, there's a lot of 
other question. Uh, uh, there's a, a question uh, coming very often, the difference between uh, alkali-activated concrete and geopolymer concrete. Uh, I don't want to enter into controversy about this. Uh, I'm a very uh, pragmatic person, meaning that uh, I use a precursor. I try to use chemicals with it to make it work. Uh, if we call it geopolymer or not, personally, I really don't care. Uh, what I'm looking for is something working, uh, try to understand how it works, uh, not enter the controversy itself. Uh, what else? Uh, rheological, rheological studies. Uh, that's a very good question because when you have a look at a lot of papers, uh, they don't care too much about rheology, which is a nonsense because uh, as we all know, uh, our first contact with concrete when we want to do some something on the field is at first the rheology before, uh, before thinking of the durability itself. Of course, we, we want a durable construction, but the first thing is to manage the rheology and it is not always easy. We know how to make it sometimes. Sometimes it's a little bit um, uh, less cheaper when we want to use some chemicals or potassium uh, silicates. Uh, but as it was said earlier, uh, we, we must have a look at the overall aspects. Uh, if we can have something much more easier to put uh, on, the, on, on the mold because uh, it is uh, less viscous, it, it will be very fine with it. Uh, it, 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 um, it means that we will need less person on the, on the field. And how we make it uh, in the lab, usually by classical uh, meaning, uh, for instance, uh, all the rheology studies uh, we did on Portland cement and other kind of materials, we can do it also uh, in the lab. It's not so difficult, it's, except when we have uh, a very um, quick setting of materials, of course, and we try to manage this, uh, especially for, for the concrete application. Uh, what else? Uh, micro silica. Uh, yeah, we we can use micro silica, but uh, but uh, as we don't have uh, aluminum inside, uh, sometimes we need something else. Uh, it can work alone, but uh, that's not the best way to do it uh, because uh, silicon bonding can be uh, uh, very improved by the uh, adding of aluminum inside. It was uh, said earlier, and you can find it in the literature. Dr. Uh, it's very nice of you. Uh, Thank you very much. More speaker in line, and uh, no let us hope we'll have a, a, a better uh, session where we have an elaborate uh, discussions. And uh, I would like all the participants also to uh, just wait for one more speaker at the end of the uh, next speaker, Dr. Rajman's presentation. We'll have uh, one more session of question and answers. Thank you, Dr. Martin sir. Uh, it was wonderful having you with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, over to Ramesh to introduce the speaker. Thank you, ma'am. So, Dr. N. P. Rajamani, sir, so, uh, former scientist, Center for Advanced Concrete Research, CACR, an advanced material lab, former concrete composition lab, and he completed BE from B, uh, VBCET Karnataka in 1972. He completed M.Tech touches in IIT Madras, and he, uh, he, uh, he completed PhD geopolymer concrete in VT, uh, VTU Bengal, and he, uh, he joined a job 1972 as a section officer PWD, and 1973 he is a, 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 as a scientist CSIR, SCRC, and from 2020, 2010 to 2020 is a professor of SM IST Katangutu. He received an Outstanding Concrete Technology Award, IEI President Gold Medal, and Dr. B. B. Langan Award for the Geopolymer Research. And he has 500 contributed in the publication. He has two patents, and he handed a more than 100 sponsored project. And he visited the USA, France, Germany. And finally, he is a guide examiner for the several PhD from various and institute. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
minimize that okay then share screen and select the presentation there are two check boxes in the bottom check both the boxes and then share Mm, there is a share screen yeah you open the presentation you minimize that oh, presentation i uh, will minimize now okay yeah, please open minimize i mean so there is a only host and all participant is there no no you just go to the share screen in the bottom just go ah, to the screen yeah ah. in that in that you will see the window no a window yeah yeah in that you select your presentation whichever is your presentation you can select that You are seeing your presentation. Many files will folders will be seen. But I have not seen that. You can scroll down, sir. It will be there in the bottom also. Scroll down. In that window. One minute. So I have opened my slide. No, are you able to see now? No. Screen, are you not able to see? No, no. So who can share? Only uh, that that uh, window is coming to me. Who can no. start sharing uh, to some? Only uh, host. I don't know. Sir, you are the co-host. Sir, you are the co. You are the co-host. You can very well share the presentation. So just go in the bottom. If you see, there is a green icon saying share screen. Yeah, I have seen that. I have put that. Yeah, on that you click. Once you click, you see so many. Uh, we there is files and folders. Now coming. are you able to see now? Ah, yes, yes. Now it is visible. Wonderful, wonderful, sir. Please no, go no, ahead. Actually, I, I go in for slideshow, sir. So go in for slideshow. I go for you no know, four or five. Okay. Ah, uh, now are you able to see? Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. No, but I got a different uh, files. I will close this. Uh, start another uh, slide immediately. Right. Okay. 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 So okay. this is to just to show that you know uh, we had a chance to visit uh, this person. Uh, then you know we had uh, talked to that Mustafa uh, from Malaysia, and also we met actually he is the uh, Hansi Lesik from uh, Czechoslovakia who really work on what is the meaning of Joe Polymer. Usually we don't work on Joe Polymer at all in India. I can make the statement now. And you know, let's say this is a province who came to our lab, and uh, like that now we had a visitor from uh, different places, and we can see B. Rangan also had come here, and uh, we can see you know you are also available here. We conducted one program, so like that now we had a lot of activities, and this is uh, some only two photographs uh, uh, of our team uh, at uh, this thing. And uh, actually, I, I didn't put all the photographs of Kashmir Tech who are being who did lot of work with us on geo polymers and also fly ash concrete. So with this, I will close this and I will go to the next file. So, so I have to open the other file. One minute, I will open. Are you able to see the file now? Hello. Are you able to see the file? No, no sir. sir. Not it. Not it. Okay. Yeah. I. You just uh, open, minimize. Yeah. Now it is coming. Yes. Ah, okay. 
go, go for slide show, sir. Please go. Are you able to see now? Yeah, fine. Okay. Good. See, you know, uh, see, when I started working in uh, SCRC, our aim was to avoid room, uh, actually, a hot temperature curing, which was followed by Bivrangan, and that was followed by everybody in India. But we did only uh, ambient temperature curing, and we did the work, and I continued to do that similar work in SRM. And SRM, there was a chance that I want, uh, had an interaction with other departments. All route size is correct. No civil engineer should work separately on geopolymer. He will not be successful. That's all the problem in India. Okay. But uh, now I had a chance to work with other department and we were able to do a lot of work. And uh, always you try to go towards the field. So this one uh, long back, we started uh, making a geopolymer uh, utility in the road making. And this was one road you made a long, long back and it is working. But we learned a lot of things from here. Okay. I am not talking about the materials. Uh, we should talk uh, later on. Let us see with the time. And uh, recently taken photograph, it is working well. And then this is the best one. This is the uh, at uh, Chhattisgarh. We uh, took all our materials. I mean uh, knowledge and went there in the uh, campus of uh, pa that uh, power plant. We did the work, uh, and the chemical was supplied by Kutwa Silkate. We transported all the way from uh, Madurai to this place. And we never mixed any chemical on the site. So the site engineer does not know whether he's using sodium silicate of this or sodium address of that concentration. Every combination, is given, one combination is given to Madurai uh, He uh, based on our recommendation, he produced it, sent it and uh, uh, by uh, lorries and it is uh, it was used here. Okay, so uh, civil engineers have to use this solution just like uh, they are using water. And you can see the you know, mix is so good. It was again uh, coming after a trial and error. And uh, here, uh, flyers are used uh, from the thermal power plant. And uh, next door, uh, Jindal is having a GGBS. We use GGBS also. You can see here, you know, the road is also made here. And uh, you can see the different uh, com, uh, you know, road making. The difference between this and SRM was SRM, we had only amateur people just like, mix and uh, throw it uh, on their road. Uh, concrete, but here uh, a person of 25 years experience was utilized. He only told them what is the material we are giving. He used his mixer machine, he used his tools. <laughs> he is having 25 years of service, and he is uh, one Mr. Badra uh, Trivedi. And today morning also I talked to him. And, uh, <coughs> the road has worked very well. Okay, at Madurai, Kutu Silicate was the sponsor for uh, some project at SRM, and also. Uh, they were involved in many, many demo projects. And at uh, uh, Madurai, <coughs> there was an association of concerning civil engineer uh, conference. We wanted to show how the geopolymer is made on the campus of a hotel. And uh, that is in the form of a road or pavement. Uh, and this is, the uh, you can see, uh, the, uh, and that liquid was released on that day. So a liquid combination was given, and it was released by Dr. Jagadish, who was the president of uh, association of concerning civil engineers. And uh, so that road has been, uh, road is a demonstration of putting a concrete in the form of payment on the campus. It has worked well using the local people, using the local people and local mixer machine. That's all we use. Okay. And uh, in SCRC, when I was in SCRC in 2006 or so, uh, we made a, a white topping of geopolymer concrete. This, uh, Photograph is there, and recently a photograph taken of that place. Still, it is working uh, very well after 10 years also. So this is the work on the you know road. I will show you the work on the uh, paper box. Again, this is only field work I am showing. I am not showing anything on the laboratory work. Okay. So, are you able to see now the screen? Okay, I have to minimize it. No, sir. I have one minute. I will. Okay. Uh, because the file is very big, you know, I cannot uh, open at a time all the files. Okay, now. Uh, are you able to see the screen now? Yes, sir. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay, okay. Now, that was the road making. 
ओके यू नो जो पॉलीमर इज जो मर जो पॉलीमर कंक्रीट इज ओनली ऑर्डिनरी कंक्रीट देयर इज नो डिफरेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंग्रेडिएंट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ सीमेंट वी आर यूजिंग सम अदर पाउडर हियर दैट इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ लाइस इन जीजी बेस एंड द लिक्विड इज ओनली आवर प्रिपेयर्ड सोडियम सिलिकेट सॉल्यूशन डोंट कॉल इट एज अल्कल एक्टिवेटर सॉल्यूशन वी कॉल रिएक्शन जेनरेटिंग लिक्विड or we can call it as another sodium silicate solution change the composition because what we get in the market is having higher molar ratio that will not uh, be active for our purpose we have to add uh, some other uh, active material like sodium hydroxide make it active and that is also sodium hydroxide solution and that we uh, developed uh, for a particular applications and use it and for different applications that means once you make the concrete as we do for any concrete application we can use it uh, in that application geo polymer also better way so you can see you know we went to so many pure block machineries in coimbatore uh, uh, thanks kutwa uh, silicate we can see the person here he is a uh, uh, ceo of that kutwa silicate and this is dinesh and we took all over you know technology there and methodology and made the geo polymer building blocks Our paper blocks in their factory and showed them it works very well. Okay, then same thing you know we tried in uh, uh, one uh, uh, plant at uh, Chennai that is Kiran Global Chemicals who gave us a project on uh, actually making formulas for geo polymer concrete in SRM and I after as soon as I joined SRM and they use our formulation for their own work later on. Okay, and uh, we can see this uh, this this is a uh, using. actually the uh, pvc or we have our pre molds okay and not pressurable so this is uh, we did, uh, did lot of um, uh, production there and it was used there and this is one we used uh, the same um, uh, combinations we try to use in this center of nationalization in raichur and you can see the you know demonstration was given to the people And we use it here pressure blocking also. You can see here. Uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, we have used a pressure uh, uh, ordinary pavement uh, paper block making machinery, and you can see thousands of blocks we have made, and we have used them. Okay. And uh, another one, uh, as I told you, whatever you do with the uh, Portland cement can be done. So there is a egg laying machine for geo uh, ordinary concrete. And egg laying machine. This machine moves on the you know uh, on the ground and it goes on laying the uh, paper blocks. And this machine was used for making geo polymer block. And uh, that was sponsored by one company called Aeons uh, Company. And he is uh, in charge of that, uh, 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 Mr. Murli, uh, who were who were the first to produce structural grade uh, building blocks in Chennai. And that was used in making. The structural building on the campus of College of Engineering, Gindi, uh, Professor Ayer Shankumar used it and proved that it is uh, faster than RCC construction. Okay, anyhow you know, they went into geo polymer uh, uh, production uh, thinking and they gave us and they it was tried in the uh, actually uh, suburb of Chennai. Okay, then you know we went to so many other you know uh, building block making uh, places in uh, Chennai. And showed them that uh, this can be used. You can see the other scenes like coming like that. Okay, and this is the one I wanted to show you that uh, Aeons block had a structural paper block making machinery in in Chennai more than 30 years back, and we, uh, they sponsored a project at NCRC to make the uh, geo polymer building block, and we produced them in their factory. All types of uh, paper uh, building blocks, including. Uh, you can see here we are doing the uh, hollow. So we have done all types of uh, building blocks because mix only has to be slightly changed. And we proved that you know geo polymer concrete can have any application which is valid for the ordinary concrete. So this is I wanted to show you. And uh, here we never use water curing or hot water curing, hot air curing or hot water curing. You can see this is a curing system where we simply store the. Uh, uh, Building blocks so that the self polymerization continues at room temperature. So this is the one you know regarding the uh, paper blocks. I will go to another you know application. Sorry, because you know I, the files are too big because of photographs. I am not able to uh, open them at the same time. Okay, 
now are you able to see now hello yes sir hi yes, sir okay please uh, tell me oh this is again you know we produced uh, actually uh, three cost units on the campus of uh, uh, center for rash relation i am actually technical advisor there i am r and d you know advisor there and also uh, they are our uh, they were our industry partner for a dst project also and it is a state government uh, actually company uh, actually uh, supported by power corporation karnatak power corporation who are having thermal plant and norwegian government so their job is to use fly ash in the all the constructions they are not uh, you know uh, laboratories they are actually production units they build lot of buildings and produce lot of uh, products and give to the people and, uh, so in their campus we went there and used their material and showed what uh, precast products we can make that is whatever they are producing we use all their products in geopolymer you can see the systems here all these are made in geopolymer that means as i was telling anything we make in uh, portland cement concrete can be made in geopolymer so this is the one which was done at the campus of raichur you can see here so many types of uh, products and you can see a list is also given here you can see so many whatever they are, because i told you they are commercial people the turnover per year is more than 30 crore and it is that institution is headed by actually that a dc district collector commissioner whatever you call he is the heading and there is a general council membership also, member also i mean general body there is a governing council and the governing council consists of members from so many universities and pwds and pollution control board and uh, they gave our representation also there you can see whatever you you can imagine precast products can be made they are all listed here and they were made and our interest was to show that the geopolymer concrete can be used for any product of ordinary concrete then uh, we requested them to start a, a demo center where they can uh, assemble all these precast products and show to the any visitor coming to that place that geopolymer can be used for making any product as it is done in portland cement and this uh, demo center was uh, inaugurated there in uh, um, raichur uh, in uh, 2016 or so 17 and this inauguration was done by one uh, dr shawn from uh, australia uh, who is a, who is also doing lot of precast products in uh, uh, australia and is a friend of actually jay sanjay and you can see the at that time we created a, a display center and you can see a look at that okay another work i uh, collected from the literature and my searching was the geopolymer was used for making a ferro cement and this work we have done in the laboratory lot in srm as well as in crc and uh, i found that uh, found this one available in the uh, literature they used uh, for making the actually uh, roof with geopolymer Oh, so what I wanted to tell was whatever we can do in uh, ordinary concrete can be made in geopolymer concrete also. Okay, now I will come to the actually uh, one more uh, uh, application uh, that is on the buildings. Okay, where we have built the actually the building. are able to see now yes sir okay fine so this is uh, i collected there is one more you know very uh, active geopolymer uh, person in india that is professor radhakrishnan from uh, rv college of engineering bangalore um i must uh, agree here that you know i had a chance to work with a lot of uh, other uh, discipline people like chemical engineering chemistry aeronautical engineering mechanical engineering aero and biotechnology so many departments i could interact and get lot of knowledge and incorporate in our work many civil engineers don't have that chance so this uh, i think uh, prof dada kishan also he may be having that uh, limitation that uh, he doesn't have interaction with chemistry department doesn't mean anything uh, bad it is good only uh, but uh, 
what i meant was uh, he has worked a lot with uh, this limitation in the behind but doesn't matter he has been able to produce lot of uh, geopolymer concrete uh, formulations for phd is in mtex and one building also yes but that's why i put here because professor mazavi told only field application no uh, thinking about what applications can be made i'm making one sentence that whatever you make in portland cement concrete can be made in geopolymer concrete also with the tenet okay he is a person uh, who is uh, uh, involved in so many activities and uh, so this is the building he has built it is near bangalore and here geopolymer building blocks were made in the uh, site and it was used here you can see and there is a building plan also given and uh, this is the you know, basic material he has used so only thing he has used cement mortar for jointing otherwise he has used uh, other thing only for uh, geopolymerization and he told me he has not used the sodium silicate he has used only sodium hydroxide okay and uh, after so many years still it is uh, doing very well you can see this kind of machinery has used for making the building blocks you can see building blocks how they are making and uh, we can see that uh, another view and you can see a lot of uh, products he has made on this side and he has used them this is so you can see the building under construction and what i wanted to show was it was done after studying lot in the laboratory so this uh, bonded uh, prism samples were made and uh, you know bonding also was studied and uh, eccentric loading was studied and even walnuts walls were built and studied and uh, actually bond strength also was studied how it is bonding well with the cement mortar or the mortar so a special bond uh, test was done the core shear bond test was done and you know even not only when he tested even for a flexural bond also by giving a bending moment to the joint so with so much of work he has been able to confidently build a masonry building where structurally it is safe okay and now interestingly what is the thermal behavior of this buildings then we can see here this uh, is related to the temperature outside you can see here temperature inside so geopolymer concrete is a cooler inside we can see that geopolymer this uh, yellow blue line is geopolymer we can see less than that okay and uh, in the winter time is interesting winter time outside is uh, actually uh, cooler inside it is a geopolymer ambient temperature and uh, outside is a uh, cooler but inside is a uh, hot that's what we want so a uh, uh, geopolymer based uh, building blocks will make a thermally comfortable building and uh, so he has uh, you know also shown that you know such a products can be made uh, large on this site as i told you anything we can make with portland cement can be made with ordinary concrete also or vice versa so we can see here so many products are made in ordinary concrete can be similarly made in uh, uh, geopolymer so without any hesitation okay and then i will make a last presentation of uh, scrc building they have made uh, where they are used in a construction of a, uh, actually uh, one um, one uh, a school building they are used it are you able to see now hello yes, sir yeah yes, okay sir. actually uh, to work with the jo polymer with uh, this person called dr ampili and uh, uh, she did her phd also on jo polymer concrete in college of engineering indi it so happened that i became examiner for her also phd examiner but uh, she is wonderful person working so closely on the jo polymer concrete co formulation and when i left as scrc i used uh, to produce 70 mp strength recently for her phd program also she produced 180 mpa strength 200 mpa so there is no question of telling that this uh, concrete is weaker or stronger it question of combination and applications also lot of applications uh, she had tried and this is for uh, road breakers so we can see you now speed breakers can be made in geopolymer concrete uh, it is showed and also uh, the, as i told you when the concrete is ready mix is ready we can make use of, for making any Uh, portland cement uh, system uh, components also and brick making block making uh, they developed the technology and gave it to uh, they have been transferring technology salem and they have produced a lot of building blocks 
and also no current global also they took some uh, uh, product from um, technology and they uh, started producing and uh, so this is field application and uh, in scrc from the beginning we were whatever we were doing in the laboratory we were making on the site that is the professor j s ram swami is plan you can see earlier any building in our csir campus always there was new technology was used and that uh, you now in the minds of uh, scientists of scrc is continued and uh, we try to use it always on the site where it is uh, required and uh, now this uh, geopolymer uh, building blocks were produced in on the campus and used for making the you know a building extension in a clra school adiyar chennai so and this was inaugurated also so um, and also later on they made one new uh, this is our concrete composite lab now it is called reverse material lab uh, we were the first i mean we were initiating this lab uh, establishment in scrc in 1974 75 76 and uh, through un assistance and uh, now recently they made a geopolymer uh, no paper uh, i mean payment and the bond it is easy to make and uh, this one was done more than 15 years back or 20, uh, 50 years back in scrc campus where we had put as i told you always uh, take the you know site uh, build uh, lab work to the site so i was working on high volume flash concrete <coughs> we made a roads on high volume flash concrete on the campus first time in the campus and maybe first time in the chennai also high volume flash made in rmc and brought them and we took this you know core uh, course and studied them and the core uh, taking was filled with geopolymer concrete and there was no shrinkage it was filled properly and perfectly without shrinkage much shrinkage as i wanted to tell you that uh, formulation um, is, uh, makes the difference in the uh, combinations okay and uh, no i want uh, though it is not a field work but that can be used easily in the, any field work because joints are most important precast units and dr uh, later uh, dr uh, lakshmanan who was the director of acrc he told me that he, how can you say that your concrete gets uh, m30 grade in one day i don't believe it so he made a slab with a joint within 24 hours we tested the slab for the full load within 24 with the joint made in jo polymer it worked very well so uh, it uh, helped him also to understand and uh, get confident jo polymer for us also it was a very good you uh, know work on the this thing so this is a uh, you know application there are so many other things the applications but i uh, i hope you know there is uh, some other time you know we'll have uh, uh, combinations no uh, dr madhavi i will make one right. very small presentation on basics of geopolymer uh, to understand how we should do the uh, little understanding of what we are doing geopolymer uh, on the site okay uh, no are you able to see the slide now yeah yes sir okay. okay so this is actually i wanted to start this only but i was given a lot of advice by so many people because i tend to you know tell lot of technical things and you know that's why i didn't you know everybody told me don't talk about technical things only talk about application to be made then come to so i uh, reverse way i'm going but anyhow it is important to see that and um, so uh, this is you know paris agreement we want to help Okay, because uh, embodied content, uh, energy and uh, carbon dioxide content of uh, geopolymer is less. We have proved it. Okay, and we have three D polymeric chain. This is very important. Okay, this is you know carbon carbon uh, combination, carbon carbon combination, and uh, this is uh, organic material. Okay, and when this uh, individual carbon carbon particle uh, no uh, chemical join together, we get a polymer which is organic polymer, plastic with organic polymer. but in geopolymer we don't get this carbon and car but only uh, relation with the geopolymer is their poor coordinated uh, uh, carbon same thing is also here aluminum is poor coordinated 1 2 3 4 even though it is aluminum only three valencies we are using it because we put sodium there inside sodium or potassium it becomes poor coordinated aluminum electrically correct and silicon automatically it is a four coordinated silicon only we get it okay 
And now, now uh, structurally, it looks like this. So, SI04, I showed you, it looks like this. No silicon directly, this aluminum also looking like that only. And you can see here the uh, diagram. Please remember, uh, don't take it, uh, a lot of chemistry it is important. As they were telling, SI by yield ratio, this is the thing. So this is, you know, a lot of uh, silicon are present here, no AL here. Now, once a year, SI they remove and they put AL there. That's why sodium is required. And this becomes our you know, binder material. This becomes our binder material. In terms of one AL, we can remove two, three also. Again, how to remove them? How to, it is a chemistry, chemistry. That's what he was uh, Ralph for talking. So these are all discussed in the this book and other books also. So this is geopolymer, you can say. This is a, here there is a aluminum as three, silicon is three, connected through oxygen only. This is called bridging oxygen. Don't take it too much of a chemistry, nothing. It is only bridges. By itself, AL will never uh, react with uh, SI. Never combination. There is a rule for that. And let us not discuss into that. So this combination can be studied in NMR spectroscopy. Okay. And one more thing I want to bring to your notice. Geopolymer concrete is not a single world. It is worked by so many people in so many ways, but everything is related to the similar structure of sodium, aluminum, and you know this uh, silica. So we can see the names. I have just listed the names. We can see the names. Sir, names uh, can... sir, okay. sorry for interrupting you. Uh, maybe we can take a few question and answer sessions. Okay, that's no. I got only another three minutes only, not more okay. than two minutes. Okay. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. Two minutes only. Say so this, I wanted to tell you, uh, liquid system is combination of sodium hydroxide. We must know the known uh, concentration, which is laboratory made. But this is the sodium silicate is factory made. And we must get these properties from the manufacturer. No, we should not get them from manufacturer. We should uh, test them in the laboratory. They are not very big things. This uh, molar ratio is the weight ratio. We can easily test the ASM, uh, uh, BS code. Solid concentration easily can be tested. We have done so much of chemistry in our first year of engineering, also in our few first year colleges, then CD, can you not get this measurement? Nobody measures this, it's wrong. And you know, I, I told you sodium silicate solution is a same, same as the commercial solution, what you are using. Both are same. Only this ratio is changed now. So don't take it as alkali activated solution. It is nothing but it's sodium silicate solution only. Because we cannot produce that in the factory and there's no demand for that and it is not easy to produce and keep it for a long time. And there is no market yet for that. That's why they are not, they are using only this ratio more than two only they are producing in the market, the, uh, in their factory, because there is a demand for that. Sodium silicate is more than 300 year old, 200 year old chemical. And the most mysterious liquid, because you can see, depend upon the ratio here, SiO2 by NaTO ratio, so many, these are all, you know, different molecules present in the solution. So if the ratio is only 0.5, these are the molecules present. If it is a three, so many. So when you change the ratio, the chemical composition of the sodium silicate changes, then your reaction changes. So you must know this ratio yourself. And try, if it is possible, you can find out this uh, combina uh, this uh, chemical uh, combination, dimer, trimer, all those molecules, but uh, not necessary. But at least you should remember that this is uh, ratio is very important. Test ourselves. Don't give it to anybody. Okay. And now uh, pH, pH, everybody is talking because the Ralph made a common uh, talking that alkali. In, uh, engineers are against alkali. I just want to show you that NaO solution pH is from 7 to 15 possibility. Okay. Sodium hydroxide used in the uh, geopolymer combination, what I see in the literature is 14.6 to 15.6, very high, terrific high. But if you take sodium silicate uh, commercial, it is only this much. And then if you make this combination of the sodium uh, drug, sodium bilkate, only 12.5 to 13.5, very question of high alkalinity of the geopolymer concrete. And it is put here. Geopolymer concrete, we made a mix and studied, you know, pH directly is a solution mix. After mixing with concrete, in the concrete, it is 12.65, which is similar to the ordinary concrete. So don't tell that the geopolymer concrete is highly alkaline, wrong. It, it is put in this, in this, you know, in this uh, slide. 12.3, it can go up to 13.1 because that alkali silica reaction and when the silica sodium content is more in OPC, it may become more. Okay, but otherwise it is the range. So don't think it is very high alkaline, geopolymer concrete. That's why you know, when I gave the gloves to the people to work for geopolymer concrete mixing in ACRC, 
first few days, afterwards they never use it because they felt that there is nothing different between this and that. Same thing happened in SRM also. But still, I always tell for OPC as well as fresh concrete also better to use gloves. Okay, and this and the, uh, uh, only two slides. I want to show tell this fact. We have done numerical value calculation for all this. It is not from the literature. So strength development you have studied. This we have studied. This combination also we calculated actually. Okay, and we have studied the acid resistance, temperature resistance, fire resistance, and uh, uh, steel uh, corrosion. We have studied. And what I wanted to tell that was these are the uh, no different uh, parameters that control the concrete properties. So no water binder ratio alone. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, there is no uh, one uh, ratio. There are so many uh, factors here. This was uh, done by a paper published uh, in American Concrete Institute, which, for which I was a reviewer. And using artificial network, uh, they collected raw properties on the uh, data, literature data, and proved that. So it is not easy to make a uh, quick design methodology for geopolymer. Okay, just I wanted to tell you. There are so many types of geopolymer concrete formulations, and that's why we should not uh, say that you know it is. Uh... So I want to tell you the strength is all the same, not different. Okay, and the cost is it can be a little higher, slightly less, or more it depends. And uh, I'm sorry here I'm using word the geopolymer according to actually this David uh, uh, who always tells me don't use the word geopolymer if you're using the word actually. And as soon as you increase the amount of fly ash more than 80%, it tends to be a geopolymer. Okay. And if you use less than that, it is tend to be not at all geopolymer. But we don't have alternative. It is a glamour word. We are using geopolymer wrongly. Okay. Anyhow, and the bond strength you have studied, sulfate resistance you have studied, magnesium and sodium both. Only sodium is not uh, resolved. And this is the most important. Chloride diffusion coefficient you have studied, RCPT values may fail here. But the solar division coefficient will never fail to show it is better. Okay. And uh, this, all this, uh, we have done the work. Okay. And we have done uh, in inclusion of uh, lightweight material to get lightweight concretes and fibers inclusion to get uh, different properties, pre testing, all. And foam concrete also I made. I told you, whatever we can make with Portland cement can be made a geopolymer. Okay. We have done that. Nanoparticle incorporation too, we have done in SRM because I guided some uh, physics students. And nanotechnology student, and uh, he proved that it is better. And ceramic uh, admixtures we tried, made it uh, high temperature resistant geopolymer. Otherwise, geopolymer is not high temperature in general, what you do in India. It is always maybe 100 degrees, 200 degrees. More than 300, it will be as bad as uh, ordinary concrete or as good as ordinary concrete. Okay. And this encapsulated studies also were made nuclear waste utilization. And disposal. This also slightly initial work I have done in SCR in SRM uh, with the physics department and uh, actually uh, biotechnology department and nuclear division there. We did that work. But this is what I wanted with this. I will close with my work on geopolymer uh, data. This is the bond strength studies. This is done by my PhD scholar, Mr. Bupalan, who proved that the bond strength, why the bond strength of geopolymer concrete is better than ordinary concrete. I wanted to prove. So we studied the chemical reagents separately, and we proved that you know bond strength uh, versus slip by having this uh, condition. It was the most common. Even in uh, uh, reinforced concrete, uh, fiber reinforced concrete also will get this this uh, curve only. But in geopolymer concrete, we can see straight hardening type. That means you know bond is always slowly, slowly actually decreasing, not suddenly like this. So this is uh, this gives us. Uh, a better uh, structural property, just I wanted to tell you. Okay, so with this, I will close. And uh, I'm sorry I made it uh, very fast, but uh, um, I hope you know, people will now know that. I feel most of the you know, audience is civil engineering and whatever Ralph and David are talking, I don't know how much of it is uh, so much meaning to many of us because we are not bothered about uh, microstructure, many of us, many, not all. And we all talk about only compressive tensile strength, compressive tensile shear strength, special behavior. We are not going into the materials, uh, you know, microstructure and material science approach, which is important for new material because this is relatively new material. Whereas Portland cement is more than 200 years old. 
So a lot of information is available on the microstructure stability and long-term properties here of the builder. So when you say geopolymer concrete, don't think it is one material. Any paper is different from another paper. So one paper's conclusion should not be taken by another person's conclusion to prove himself, unless everything is same. So with this, I will close and... Uh, um, Thank you very much, sir, uh, uh, for your uh, very enlightening uh, presentation. We'll just take a couple of minutes uh, to have one small uh, presentation. Once again, our thanks to the sponsors, uh, we are mixed and uh, Katua Silicates. So thanks a lot. Now I would leave it open for uh, uh, a short, brief uh, question and answer session. Maybe a few questions to Dr. Rajmane, sir. Uh, somebody would like to post it, you can post it in the chat box. Sir, is, it, is the chat box open? Please uh, open the chat box. Dr. Rajmane can take a couple of questions. So are you there? Hello. Yes, sir. So you can take a couple of questions. Shall I read it for you? Yeah. Uh, one, uh, one, one question I will answer. And remaining, you can give a brief of the questions. I will answer them myself. Okay. One question is on the chemical admixture. This is the most awaited development in geopolymer concrete. The most awaited geopolymer concrete development is admixtures. And the uh, ordinary concrete has become successful because of uh, admixture availability, like superpolarizer, retarder, accelerant. They are not available here. Simply, people in India are doing adding uh, this uh, superpolarizer of ordinary concrete here and say it works. Never, never. Only Wagner Brothers in Australia have developed something which they are not telling. Okay, so admixtures are not available here. It doesn't mean that we cannot use. But be careful. We are. Not, we should be have proper quality control on the site. That's why I always feel geopolymer concrete at present is meant for precast production, not on the replacement of potent cement in possible. And why this is uh, admission development is very difficult here, or not difficult, why it is uh, very uh, challenging is here is, uh, again, I'm going to a little bit of material science. 
when you take a water in the geopoly in the ordinary concrete mix after mixing the concrete take the water out what is the solid content of the water is almost nothing if you take the calculation it comes in millimoles very very point not not 1% or point not for the remember 99.9 per point water only whereas here in our combination water can be as much uh, solids can be as much as 30% 40% 50% so this 50% solid content will interact with any chemicals you are producing using it for ordinary concrete for uh, setting time uh, control or uh, workability control those chemicals will not be available here for their action here because of this solids present it will start reacting with the solids present in the solution and it will be affecting our chemical reaction later on so this is a challenge has to be met by the people and i am waiting how it will be done later on that's all i want to tell you yeah. don't in srm i one one percent did 27 admissions we tried 27 to 30 admissions so called admission from paint industry from so many places and none of them work satisfactorily consistently all the time okay sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work because i just told the geopolymer are different types ply ash is different gzb is different their combinations are different so this you know solution we prepare different so different combinations admission development is a really a challenge to be met yet thank you dr martin is in a rush to meet for another meeting uh, thank you very much dr martin uh, it was wonderful having you with us i can i have one last question for you for the participants are you there dr martin yeah i think he had to rush for the meeting anyway my thanks to dr martin for all the time he has spent for us and uh, i would also like to thank the chairman of uh, icci chennai center who has given me a very good free hand in deciding this and taking this uh, webinar forward in the way which is comfortable for me so thanks to dr radhakrishnan pillai who could not join here because of some other assignment he is right now in kerala and uh, there is some network issue over there and so he could not join anyway my personal thanks to the entire icci chennai center team to ms ramya also who has been very supportive for me and i have one question to dr uh, ralph and dr joseph uh, would you like to take some questions dr ralph oh i'm already uh, uh, answering some questions in the chat yes yeah so you can continue if you yeah we have come want. to the end of the session yeah you can uh, discuss it uh, openly so that everybody is at uh, an advantage some of the sure. questions you would like to take we can take for another 5 to 10 minutes and then wind it up absolutely uh oh there's a good question how good is cement mortar bonding with geopolymer blocks uh this is a very interesting question because it works perfectly there's a a very excellent an excellent chemical addition between a geopolymer binder and portland cement uh either hardened or at least fresh and they bind they are binding together very well so uh, you can't separate them it means it is very good for repair for example uh what is solution uh can i use ggbf alone to produce geopolymer concrete no because it's only an additive slag is an additive to make room temperature setting and that's all it's also provides some mechanical strength but uh so today many researchers are going on one part just add water geopolymer concrete is it possible to develop a one part geopolymer concrete what you find in the it's an interesting question because what you find in the literature they are doing the wrong way uh as uh, <clears throat> what i've developed in my presentation lately uh meaning uh, they use only NaOH and add water which leads to a very corrosive situation induce lots of heat and in the end you have lots of free salt and so on so almost all uh, papers you see on people trying to do a one part uh, geopolymer cement in the scientific literature uh, they are ending with a bad product 
with bad properties, with lots of problems, because they don't follow the polymer uh, kinetics. And uh, there's one slide I encourage you to see again when I give the an example of a formula with a fly ash cement. I tell you to follow the step, the mix design. We do once, one at a time. We don't mix everything together. Because, uh, for example, if you have your uh, silicate and you add immediately um, an, a material that is very reactive, it will take all the silicate for itself. Whereas if you, i be more specific. <clears throat> Uh, we put fly ash first with silicate because fly ash is less reactive. It takes time. So you mix it for 10 minutes, for example. If you, and you must add slag, which bring room temperature setting, you, you must add it after 10 minutes or after 15 minutes. Why? Because slag is super reactive. Uh, we need to add it in the end, because if we add slag at the beginning, it will take most of the silicate for itself, leaving nothing for fly ash. So you must respect some order in, in the mix. And that's why the one part are not working. Or, <clears throat> and that's why it's difficult to do. Uh, there's a group in Hong Kong who has uh, developed a one part, because we did it together. We have developed it with them for road repair. And the purpose of the success, the reason of the success of this one part is because we follow the kinetics of the polymeric reaction. It, it starts with uh, reacting with the slower uh, fly ash. Uh, we add metacholine, which is the second slowest reaction, and it ended with slag. But you need to prepare these precursor in advance so that one will react after a certain period of time. So you need a lot of preparation by putting some chemicals and some things and so on and so on and so on. Uh, it's not easy at all. You must follow the uh, kinetics of the chemical reaction. That's why it's hard. And that's why you will find in the scientific literature today, many people get bad results because every ingredient has to be prepared to follow, to, to, to react at the right moment and not at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Professor Vadivi, can I ask one question to Ralph? Yes. yes sir. Yeah, please. Dr. Ralph, I wanted to know when you use a sodium silicate solution, the sodium available in the solution must be used completely in the reaction. Is it right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that means you know. Yeah, I want is... the ratio sodium to aluminum equals one always. Yes, that's what. That means we should not simply use sodium silicate solution just like that. Absolutely not. In India, not. they are using sodium silicate and sodium hydroxide uh, ratios. They are talking sodium hydroxide. Uh, uh, solution to sodium hydroxide, uh, sodium, uh, sorry, sodium silicate uh, uh, solution to sodium hydroxide solution ratio they are talking as one parameter and sodium hydroxide's molarity another parameter wrongly. As you have put yeah. up now, it is not the question of uh, how much is sodium silicate, it is a question of how many sodium ions are there to react with aluminum. And when exactly. it's excess, it will come out as a efflorescence or leaching out, correct? That's yes, why it is called correct. polymerization, it is not called hydration. So what we are doing is not polymerization at all in India. We are looking at yes. only compressive tank. I think uh, it requires a lot of chemicals, uh, people coming into the work and studying it. And uh, Professor uh, Ralph should be uh, guiding everybody to look at what is the meaning of geopolymerization, not polymerization. People talk polymerization only organic, but this is geo. The silicon and aluminum coming together in tetrahedral nature. So this requires a lot of... Uh, uh, input into material science side. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Ralph. You have done a great job. You've been very, very Thank supportive, you. very, very cooperative. And then it went off wonderful, amazing. It's mind blowing the way you have conducted and 
all the three speakers all the four speakers i should say were wonderful and it's very very knowledgeable and definitely i am sure we can see so many compliments coming in the chat box and not only that uh, everybody is going back home carrying a lot of bundle of information on their head so thanks a lot it was amazing uh, interacting with you we'll keep in touch and uh, definitely i would uh, request uh, for a formal vote of thanks by my colleague uh, and who is also the executive committee member of indian concrete institute mr kanan raj dr kanan raj kumar so please uh, proceed with your formal vote of thanks <coughs> and thank you ma'am a good evening to one and all it is a great honor and privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this memorable occasion first and foremost i express my gratitude and thank all of the invited speakers dr joseph davidos dr raf davidos dr martin and np rajamani sir who despite the busy schedule has found time to grace this occasion by delivering wonderful lectures lectures gave deep insights into the topic of geopolymer concrete and also revealed some interesting facts i mentioned i must mention some uh, our deep sense of gratitude to dr joseph davidis for explaining the real facts about the co2 emission and the consistency of the rock based geopolymer ferrocellulite further we are grateful to Dr. Ralph Davidos for sharing the valuable information on fundamentals of Portland cement and geopolymer chemistry, reaction mechanism, and terminologies used in the geopolymers. I like to express our sincere thanks to Dr. Martin for his great talk on the formulation of geopolymer binder by looking deep into the reactivity and composition of the alkaline solution. And we would also like to acknowledge our gratitude to Dr. N. P. Rajamani. for exposing the fundamentals of geopolymer concrete and its development towards the field implementation thank you sir i like to thank indian concrete institute chennai center and sir mr sensor technology ramavaram for arranging this informative webinar i like to convey my sincere thanks to dr molli krishna dean srm ramavaram for being the backbone of this program and vinay gupta icf president for presiding this function nothing can be achieved alone and a function like this wouldn't have happened without the effort and support from the sponsors i like to thank mr molidharan chief executive officer vishar communication india private limited and also executive committee member from icia chennai center for introducing the sponsors for our program i am really grateful as well as obliged to thank the sponsors the sarath babu rms ready mix concrete and prabhakaran kutwa silicates for extending their support in the form of sponsorship a big thank to all the members who have supported and sponsored the program last but not least i extend my heartfelt thanks to ms ramya from icha chennai center and rameshwaram assistant professor from srm ramavaram for their hard work in conducting this webinar and making this event a great success a special acknowledgement for the efforts to dr madhavi madam for her motivation and dedication in arranging the webinar without you madam this seminar would have not been possible thank you very much once again i also i thank all the members who have participated overall me and make this seminar even good if anybody's name is left out who have worked directly or indirectly for the conduct of the program it is unintentional thank you ma'am thank you for all thank you for giving this opportunity thank you sir thank you very much so thank you dr ralph and thank you rajmani sir and uh, thanks to all the dignitaries who have come and who are here till the end of the session and to all the participants so we'll meet once again on some other occasion thank you very much சாட் பாக்ஸ் சேவ் பண்ணிக்கணும் எப்படி ஹலோ